Ibrando Shigaliata. We are don't sit down again. Let's let's pray. I know God and the yes is still not that could this morning. Hallelujah. The Lord is our strength in Jesus' name. We thank the Lord for the opportunity to gather again in his presence. You know, that's what we do when we come. I know we have little time to pray before the service. You know, we entered into the service fully, but I would like us to, you know, give, give God thanks this morning for his mercy, for helping us to see this day, for the precious thing that he did on this day. Can we open up our mouth and begin to bless the name of our Father this morning? Can we thank him? Can we bless his name? Yebande Aratsa Taka Paka Jedan de Kali Adaze Eprata Zende Kapa Tade Handa Kapa Kade Elisha Pata Ziria Paka Bagalande. Can you pray? Can we open up our mouth and pray? Don't we spy this body? Can we give God thanks for what he did? For his mercy over us as a church, over you as a person. It can only, he said the, good, the, the Friday was good because Jesus kept quiet. And he resurrected us the foundation of our belief. That is why we became born again. That is why we are saved. That is the ultimate price that was paid for us by the blood of the Son of God. We say thank you. Thank you, Jesus, this morning. O brande shandi aratazeria patalenda. Ere cabrato giria patale geleba. Mazenda caprata egelege bratolema. Ajanda caprote gelege legelegele. Ele cabrata egele cabashande gelegelegeleba. Ore patoziria patala gala gala galebo. Eke keke brotezi prataya galegelande. Abrata laria toshi bande kate ziria pata. Maje de kapa tedia pata zande kata geda. Ere patozi bande karia toze pote geda. Ale kreko shandelia pataleria. Thank you for this season, O oh God. Thank you for your mercy, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, our Father. We say thank you. Barrio to see pro cabala taya galede. Ere bobo baba 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 baba. Azende guerriero shinde guerria pataliere gabosa. Mandelia roshende carriere galegalege. Elesidenke pare pole kembo teria tosi chingalide. E pratale le shande keri paratalaha. Are to sushi geliero potegeliba. Are papa papa protegele gelebo. E pro cajondiha. Agende palide. Egende pelede. Agende parode. Egende pelede. Egende pelede. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the season that is upon us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your mercy. See, oh God, for what you are doing. Because you have made us to be in time. To be in time. To be in time with fulfillment of prophecy. To be in time with the hand time agenda. To be in time with the company of people pursuing life. Pursuing everlasting life. Pursuing eternal life, which is the promise you have promised us. Jesus, we say thank you, this body, oh God. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for your death. Thank you for your raising. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yande ke pratalada. Areto zibrondalish kambolebo. He pratale protele pratale na shande karida. Majonde protabaliara shande gele. He brato zivevo vata. Ali ka bratale na jonde. He jore paratare paze. He protegele por Thank you, Lord, for the way you came from heaven to earth to show us the way, to show us the way back to you, back to your Father, back to the throne of God. We give you glory, Jesus. 
We give you praise, oh God. Oh, bless your race, your pataline. Ajore pariote zi pratalege. Oh, prepo pratalenia. Ajande kerote zida. Are kabrote liora shande geleba. Mejande fitami. Ajovi kalande. Are ke polendia. Ore pasotande. Ere panasandia. Atomi na sifra kotegeli. Me shende kariere gabo gabo, ere papamba geliere gabale shande kereta, ele gagale gabo gabo shi apronte lera, ere parata kandi keso deba, me zembo tanda kapoli aposia, ere papara tasata kalege, ere potesi ato papalidi, me ridi, aperidi, aperidi, aparidi, 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 osha. Andeli atosi apari aragabasa oleke protegeri ore pori epoge bogobo majanda kapratalene ojenjeje brata ligari otosidie ana tiane Jesus. O prepo preta lida, alesia to minandosia, ele te prato baliahante, ele caprotege li pracobonda, agenda proto bracabalata, ale kere, majonda poleta, agenda capolema, agenda capaleto, agenda capaleto, irote si, areta mai, arote boi, de repotoi, arepatana, azonte keripa. We glorify you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for this Sunday. Thank you, Lord, for this study. Thank you, Lord, for this day in the Spirit. Thank you for this time in the Spirit. Thank you for what you are doing, even in your agenda, in your will, even upon the face of the earth. Oh, Lord Jesus, we say thank you for making us to be partaker of it, for making us to know you, for making us to come to a place where our life will not ever remain the same. Know you. In you, knowing your will. Oh, Prata Zandi Arata Zande, O Keliato Sinambo Sifa, Mirote Frato Balide, Ere Para Sanda Capaleda, Azande Ke Protegelido, Apropa Bretegelenasia, Mere Papa Patada, Atezisi, Ezezela, Azelepa, Azaneta, Ozinambro, Apretada, Apapara, Epopreta, Ali kando si prate krete si prata le kreto liga braga braga baga baga ba e prate ziri apa ha ha e ri apa apa prata zanda galega e re po suche ge broka broka e broka mbakari ara ha ha e e shande keri ara ge broka braga ba e broka broka prata le krata li ara gaba ha a shande le ka prata e ge le ge baga ba. Ozende keri e proto Syria, ajande ka proto ge boga 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 bo, e proto si proto keli, hariato si proto keli ere, e proto Syria tole, e proto li ere papa proto geleba, ajende keri ara hapa. For in Jesus' name we are giving thanks. Can we pray this morning that 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 will be bread in this house? You know that they will be able to breathe breath of life. It's the season of the breath of God. God wants to bless us. He said there is breath, breath of Christ and there is the breath of the almighty God. God wants to feast us. You know in the beginning when he did that in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, he said he breathed into him. He breathed, you know we want the Lord to breathe in. How many of us desire the breath of God this morning? That something will be put inside of you. That this season none of us in New and Living World Church will be short of the breath of God. That's the peak. That's where they want us to go get to. But they want us to start with the breath of Christ, which is breath of life, and the breath of more life, which is the everlasting life that must be breath into us, and also the breath of God, Almighty God, which is eternal life that must enter into us, and we must live by it. Can we pray that there will be breath in the house this morning? Everyone that will come at every level, the unbelievers class, 
pastors, teenagers, children, the Sunday school, even into the message that God, bread to be available, bread to be ministered. Can we open up our mouth and pray in the mighty name of Jesus? I can't hear you. Can you pray? Can we hold hands? Can you pray that, that, your, that, that your neighbor will, be, will receive the breath of God this morning? Can you rise up and do that? Can we do that? Can we pray? Can we pray? We want bread. If you want bread, can you pray well? Can you pray for your brother? Can you pray for your sister? Can you pray for the neighbor, the brother beside you, the sister beside you? Can you talk to the Lord concerning that person? That will receive bread. The bread of, the bread of God that give us understanding. Standing, Lord Jesus, let that bread be made manifest. O jande ke protezi pratale bro kabari abagabaha ere ke brotali ere geleha ma jande geli o pasande hareko pretali ge ere ka brotegebo is that the spirit of God had made me and the breath of the Almighty had given me life. Can we pray that this morning that indeed you will receive life? The breath of God will give you life. It will give our brothers life. At every level today, everyone, that bread will give understanding. We give life. We give life. We give life. I will receive life in the name of Jesus. Yande kaprata leda. Ajende gerie. Oh, shanderie regebo. Abrete gerie aragaba. Bread of the Almighty. Bread of the Almighty will be functional. Will be real. Able to you. Can you pray for him? Can you pray for everyone? that will be online. Every one of us today, you will experience the bread of God and you will receive bread of life. You will receive bread of life. Bread of life, Jesus, we will receive today in the name of Jesus. Yande Karyarahata. O jande ke protelia, o bre paprada, bread that gives understanding, bread that gives life, bread that opens up our hearts, bread that give us life. O brata liria pashandi aragaba. If you don't breathe upon us, we will not be alive. We will not come to your end. We will not come to your to your vicinity. We will not be aimed up. O Lord of heaven, show us your mercy. Breathe upon us this morning. Breathe upon everyone, even in the Sunday school. Breathe upon us at the young believers class. Breathe upon our children. Breathe upon our up, upon our teenagers at every level in this service today. Let there be bread. Let there be bread of life. Bread of Christ. Bread of the Almighty God. Bread of Christ. Bread of the Almighty God. Let there be bread. Let there be life. Let life be made manifest even to everyone. Let understand the come. Let lights come. Let lights come. When lights come, understand the come. Life has come. Bread has come. Jesus, we pray. Let there be abundance of bread for my brother. For my sister, for our children, for the teenagers at every level, the young believers class. Lord of heaven, we ask, oh God, visit us with bread in this season. As you have brought us into this arena, everything that will help us trap bread, trap bread, receive bread, receive bread, receive fresh life, fresh quickening inside of our soul. Let it come upon us, oh God. Help me to trap life today. Help me to trap your bread. Let that bread be a quickening. Let it be a refreshing. Let it be a quickening. Let it be a refreshing. In the name of Jesus. Yande Kariaragabasha. E brote brando shia, aje la koje mana, e prota bolie para, apre talire por reparia tazana gabaha, arete sende kalia, e repare posire. E patalanda le posende kapa. O keke pore poriatosia baragaba. Give our pastors bread. Give our teachers bread. Give our mommy bread. Give every one of us bread. Our brethren don't lie. Give us life. Give us bread. Let let move. Let pratagenia rakarata gabaha. E protezido pariere gabo. E protezido bagabaha. E protaliere gaboria ragaba. 
The breath of life is the breath of understanding. The breath of life is the breath of understanding. He said, There is a spirit in man. The inspiration of the Almighty giveth understanding. If Almighty has breath, what he has is understanding. What he gives is understanding. We come alive by our understanding. Lord Jesus, let there be great understanding today. Let there be bread best out from our mommy, from our pastors at every level today. Our teacher, let bread be given. Let bread be given. Let bread be given. Let bread be given. The breath of the Almighty, which is the understanding of the Almighty, which is the life of the Almighty. Let it be given to everyone today. He gives, the Almighty gives, He gives life, He gives bread, He gives understanding, He gives light, He gives light, He gives insight. Lord Jesus, let there be quickening. Let there be abundance of understanding to you, to me, to my brothers, to my sisters, to every one of us, every brethren online today. In the name of Jesus, I will receive bread. Can you ask the Lord? Can you tell the Lord? You will receive bread of God. There will be visitation of a bread. There will be great, 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 great breakthrough of understanding. He giveth understanding. Oh, there is a spirit in me. Man. There is a spirit in man. The inspiration of the Almighty. Give it. Give it. Give it them understanding. Lord Jesus, we are yours. We are one you have created. And indeed is your intent that we have the understanding of the Almighty. You give Almighty. Almighty gives. What you give is understanding. His life. His life. His entrance. His life. Therefore we are asking. You will cause every one of us to receive understanding today. You will cause us to receive life. You will cause us to receive life. My brother will receive life. Our teenagers will receive life. Brethren in the young believers class will receive life. Everyone, the children, their teachers, everyone will receive life. There will be life, abundance of life for to receive, for to receive. You grant us capacity, enablement, instrument to to trap life, to trap bread, to trap bread. Let it be given to us, to us, to everyone that will be here and here online. Jesus, show us your mercy. Bless us today. For in Jesus' name we are prayed. I can hear us. For in Jesus' name we are prayed. Can we pray this money? You know, that life is going to be spoken. They disseminate life by speaking. Hallelujah. They paint the life of Christ like our daddy said last week. There is a breath of Christ and there is a breath of the almighty God that, that, that we are meant to receive or that we are meant to, you know, migrate and journey. You can start with the life of Christ and from there they begin to breathe the life of everlasting life to us, which is the beginning of the life of the almighty God. Hallelujah. And they, they eventually, the, the, the end of it is that we trap all of those life inside of us. But it's only going to be given by speaking. It's going to be declared by the, by, by the speaking of the, or the declaration of the Almighty God in our midst. Can we pray? Can we pray for our mommy, even to our pastor that will take the Sunday school and down to all the teachers and the young believers class to the, to the teachers for the teenagers and all of our children teachers that indeed today they, they also will receive bread. They will be able to speak as they ought to speak. Can we open up our mouth and pray in the name of Jesus? Jesus, I can't hear you. This is where our, our, the, the breath is. Is in declaration. Is in speaking. Is in be, is in speaking. Is in being declared. Is in words. Can we pray that they will be baptized? Our mommy will be soaked even in the in, in the breath of God this morning for he for her to declare for our, our pastor to declare for our, for bread to be made known for bread to be revealed for bread to be made, to be given. 
Amen. Lord Jesus, Lord, breathe upon your servants. Breathe upon your armory. Let there be your trust. Let there be your trust. Let there be grace. Let grace be given. In the name of Jesus. I can hear you. Can you pray well? Can you open your mouth well and pray? In the name of Jesus. Oshande Caprola, Shinopa, Ejigelia, Ajaleria, Ojeleria. If you don't bless us, we are not blessed. If it is not spoken, we are not blessed. We don't want to go without being blessed, without the bright of God. Bright is blessing. Bright is blessing. Therefore, we are asking, enable your servants able to fetch this blessing. To fetch bread, to declare bread, to make it known, even in our midst, in the name of Jesus, the life of Christ. Let it be painted. Let it be painted. Let everlasting life be painted with grace, with grace, with authority, with authority. That will cause a change. That will cause a change. If a change you're calling me, bread has been given to me. Bread has been given to you. Therefore, we are asking, let the life of God be painted. Anoint your servants. Anoint your own many. Let there be words. Let there be your trust. Let the breath of God. Let it give you our inspiration. Let it give our pastor inspiration. Let it give all the pastors I will teach today inspiration. Let there be inspiration of Almighty. The right example. The right spirit. The right spirit. Let there be spirit. Let spirit be printed. 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 Adianto siya balata. Hey, great choji. Hey, le sande. Hajomande. Hey, Hele kada, hele sende, hele sende, hele sende, habori atazande le. E pasonte bariata, o jinje bolibote. E popratala, o kreto biribosa, a jonje liatoba, a prepopre tegelia, a pale shambala talegeli eregoboska, a teje jeli oro, a jonle dobara, a jele patiado, a jele petiade, a jele petiade, a jele petiade, a jele petiade, o prete prote prata bandiha, a pele pere pere bore poru, a prere pere pore poria, a reke, merepa, a pata, elepo, a pelo, a pero, e para. Hazere, 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 Hazere. That you will breathe unto us through your servant. You will paint life. That will be your trance. That will be inspiration of heaven. That will be grace to bring forth your very mind. Your very purpose will be painted. You will give them mouth. You will give your unmade mouth. You will bless her. You will bless your, your, your servants in the name of Jesus. Apratominas kabalene. Ekroshevet avroshka emando. E proska balana, a rete si frutania, o je bota procande, e que se apote bi, a pushi vato, e genti pante, mare patabolo, e granto si bahai, a le cracos que bolie patazi, e rote sica, atendo si toca bratalaha. For in Jesus' name we pray. Can we pray for every of our brethren and our heart there? You know, when we got around here this morning, it was merry-go-round. All those things can cause problems for some people. Imagine someone exhaust, just break or remove. It has started. You can see distraction. Satan is always after. You know, it was a shocker meeting, all those things on the road. Thank God we were still able to navigate it. But some people, their vehicle might still suffer it. But we want such people to be helped to come. You know, it's possible. Our prayer avails for them. Nothing will happen to them on the road. Everybody will be able to come. Can we open up our mouth and pray in the mighty name of Jesus? I can't hear you. Can you pray? Because you're here, you are still going back home. We need the mercy of the Lord to come and to go back. It's always the mercy of the Lord that helps. It shows us mercy every time we are asking this body. 
Let mercy be, be given to everyone coming even to charity pavilion this morning. It will be easy. It will be easy in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for answers to prayers. We give praise to your name, our Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's have our seats in God's presence. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, mommy. Morning, man. Um, it's uh, Easter, Easter Sunday. So happy Easter to every one of us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh, we don't celebrate Easter. We celebrate Easter. Easter is our celebration. It's the celebration of our Lord. Hallelujah. Don't be too religious that you won't celebrate Easter. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm sure Pastor Sam has Easter rice waiting for everybody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Um, we're starting a new Sunday school series uh, today by God's grace. Um, God's servant, our daddy, um, instructed that we start this series for about three Sundays before the um, season of the Spirit begins. I'm sure we are anxiously anticipating season of the Spirit, um, starting on the 12th of April. Um, amen. Can we pray? Our Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I give glory to your name for this time that you've granted unto us to look into the scripture, even in Sunday school again this morning. Lord, I ask for your mercies. I ask for your grace. I ask for the help of your spirit. I ask Jesus for the leading, the guidance of your spirit, even that of your angel. You will show me mercy, Jesus. You show every one of us mercy. You bless us by your spirit. I ask, Lord, in mercy, help me to assess even the labors of your servant, even our daddy and that of our mommy in the house, in the name of Jesus. I stand under your grace. And I ask Jesus, the Lord, you would bless every one of us. You cause of our eyes of understanding to be enlightened in the name of Jesus. It will not just be a study, but it will be an experience in the name of Jesus. Same way you took us through the experience of tribulation and you baptized many into it and you are still baptizing many into it. Lord, I'm asking, Lord Jesus, that in these three Sundays, Lord, you will cause us to have great understanding in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Um, we are starting a topic um, themed understanding precepts and lines. A peek into the understanding of the processes that convert the knowledge of God into lifestyle and nature in us. And today is lesson one of... Um, this topic of understanding precepts and line. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Pastor T, Pastor T. <laughs> it's good to have you back in church. You have become a missionary. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. 
All right, so we are looking at understanding precepts and lines. Of course, we know that um, this understanding or this um, particular thought and access into this uh, began through God's servant Adadi, Reverend Kaude Goke, when he began, you know, teaching and opening this up. And of course, I know there's been a lot of um, um, questions there and there from um, a lot of us, you know. At times, it seems as it were, we just like coinage of new vocabularies. You know, it's like those days we've used faith, hope, and charity. Holy place, outer court, holy place, most holy place. Since there are no new coinages, we just start up again with precept and lines. So maybe God knows in another two years, we'll start up with another one. Yes. Because the part of the just is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter. Um, God's servant, Reverend Kennedy Benedion, said one time, Reverend Kennedy Benedion, sorry, uh, you know, Ken always sounds like Kenneth. Every Ken to me is, is Kenneth. But that is Reverend Kennedy, not Kenneth. Reverend Kennedy Benedion, he said, the enemy of what God is saying now is what God has said. So at times, we should also understand that we are on a progressive journey. The fact that I learned one plus one in primary school does not invalidate x plus y equals to 2x. Does it invalidate it? Now, the only reason why to invalidate it is because I have not gotten to the stage of learning x plus y. And the fact that I've learned x plus y does also not invalidate the x, the y, does it? So as we progress, we come into new vistas of understanding that the Lord brings upon the house. And the essence of those understanding is primarily for one purpose, is for a life to be given birth to. Now, God's servant, our daddy, and our parents are not teaching us so that we can have big head. No. The reason for all these knowledges and understanding is for us to have big life. We can have big head and have a very small, tiny amount of life. That is not the essence. The core essence is that our life will be at par with that which is being communicated. Can we say amen? amen. So we are going to be looking at the issue of precepts and lines. And I trust the Lord that the Lord will show us great mercy um, for us to be able to Hack <clears throat> into this um, understanding, just looking a bit at um, what God's servant, our daddy, Reverend Kade, has um, thought so that it can um, become a life to us. I love the word Paul used for Timothy. He said, Thou hast fully known my doctrine and my manner of life. So meaning every understanding of doctrine should give rise to a manner of life. Now when doctrine is not giving rise to a manner of life, one thing is happening, the person that is being taught the doctrine is not understanding the doctrine. Once you have breakthrough in understanding of the doctrine, it would give rise to a manner of life. Can we say amen? Now it was very clear that the 10 spies that went even into the land of uh, the land of promise to spy it they did not understand Moses it took only Joshua and Caleb that fully understand Moses and we heard the scripture says thou as it said for Joshua and Caleb they fully followed so their full following is their full understanding of the doctrine can we say amen so today, by God's grace, in Sunday school, um, through a daddy, God's servant, um, that the Emeka Guchuku, you know, uh, would like us to look a bit again into the precepts and lines of the scriptures to the end that a lifestyle, because one of the troubles, <clears throat> sorry, one of the troubles uh, many a times that, of course, discussing here and there with maybe some of our pastors, our parents, notice that 
Many of us, when we say, recount what is being taught, or say what you understand, we have very good command of, uh, of arrangement of what was being taught, which is good, which is lovely. But when it comes to decision making, we use another thing outside what we have been taught. So really, that means that thing has not become your life. I'm saying again and again, there's a reason why I'm going through this painstakingly. The essence of the gospel, of the revelation of the gospel, is to give rise to a lifestyle. Is to give rise to a nature. So meaning, hearing the gospel should change me as a person. I'm not using the gospel to shine. You know, somewhere, let's be sincere, if you're part of the word of righteousness, it looks like something you can shine with. Is that not so? Imagine me now. You know, at times Satan has tempted many of us in many ways. You just imagine yourself going back to redeem. You came for redeem. Let's go back there. In two weeks, you become an area pastor. Just, they should just hear you preach one day. Just one day. Eh? Just hear you preach one day. Because what, quote unquote, you have, eh? it's somewhat strange. People don't have access to it. But you see, that is not the reason for the knowledge. The essence of all that we are being taught is that a people will bear witness to a life. Eh? A life that is spelled out in the gospel. Can we say amen? Can we say amen? amen? So the reason for this teaching, while we are going through this issue of precepts and lines again, is that we'll be able to uh, come into the life that the precepts are revealing and that the lines are given. Can we say amen? amen? All right, so the topic today is what are precepts and what are lines and how do they apply to us in the New Testament era? If at all they apply to us, how do they apply to us in the New Testament era? And if at all they apply to us? And of course, from understanding of Scripture, from what we've been taught, <coughs> sorry, from what we've been taught, we know that of a truth, they apply to us. Can we turn our Bibles very quickly to Isaiah chapter 28? Isaiah 28. Isaiah 28 from verse 8. Are we there? Can we all read it together? Isaiah 28 verse 8 is not on the big screen, so at times I think that gives a lot of people a challenge, but you can open your Bible. We should all be in church with our Bible. Isaiah chapter 28. Have we all opened it in our Bible? Okay, can we read it together? One, two, go. For all the tables are full of vomit and filthiness, so that there is no place clean. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Hear a little and dear a little. Amen. First John chapter 2. Just would like us to read all the text there so that when I'm making reference to it, we can um, follow and be carried along. First John chapter 2. Are we there? Can you please help us walk on the, um, the text on the, on the big screen? First John chapter 2 from verse 12 to 14. Are we all there? All right. One, two, go. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. Sorry. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. 
I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. Verse 14. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. James chapter 2. James chapter 2 from verse 22. James 2. 22 to 25. Are we there? All right, let's go. One, two, go. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works faith was made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. Amen. Finally, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. Second Corinthians 3, 6, just a verse. So um, let's read it together. One to go. Who also had made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Let's read our memory track, then uh, we'll go into the lesson of today. By God's grace and through the direction of God's servant, our daddy, Pastor Mika Iguchuku, we are going to be considering the subject of precepts and line for um, three weeks, like I said earlier. The mind behind this lesson, as we have been instructed by our daddy, Pastor Mika Iguchuku, is to both make sure that some of the themes being used in meetings in recent times are properly understood by all, and much more to ensure that as a church, we increase in our doing and obeying of God's word as it is being revealed and made known to us. Also, our daddy desires that we all as a local assembly become fully aware of the full process of procedures and steps that leads from the knowledge of the word of God and to such a word becoming our lifestyle and nature, true obedience. So one of the bane, I'm repeating this again and again for a purpose, one of the bane of this lesson is that word has to become a life. Knowledge has to become a life. We are not stopping at just having knowledge. I remember God's servant, our daddy, teaching one of the days, uh, daddy, Reverend Kyle, they go, okay, I think was it at LSC or one of the other meetings. And he said that it's possible. Okay, I think it was outside Lagos. It was in Ibadan. He said it's possible a man can know Christ. Eh? But when it comes to decision making, he uses milk. Are we together? Now, I understand the doctrine of Christ. I understand the issue of uh, um, all the things, the precepts concerning Christ, but I need to take a life decision that appertains to me. And I say, okay, Sherry, can I remember one time, let me give this example. I went to buy something at Oshodi. Then I think the market at Oshodi was still there. So I went to buy something at Oshodi. So I met a old time secondary school classmate. You know, I immediately I saw her. I was, I, I was a bit careful, you know, because she was looking like a very big madam. So so that I won't go and greet somebody that they will slap me. Why are you talking to mommy like that? So I carefully called her name. Jumoke. So she turned back. I said, ah, she's the one. So we greeted, we talked. So just this thing. Then I said, ah, where, where are you? Which church do you go to? Ah, she said, she goes to Redeem. But man, lost the CSU. Ah. So I was a bit surprised. You go to CSU. He said, why? Ah. He said, they don't pray very well in that place. So whatever they are, being, they are teaching her in the Redeem she goes to, she uses something else. So she comes to church, she can, you know, laugh with everybody, rejoice with them, but there is something she's really using, 
what he's using is CAC power. Are we together? So he goes to pray to solve a problem. So it's possible maybe where she's going to, they are not solving the problem the way they should solve the problem. So many at times, the reason, the essence of us understanding doctrine is not for me to just know that there is a doctrine called the revelation of the Father. I should be able to live out with the sense of Father life. Can we say amen? So what are precepts? What are precepts? We'll just look a bit into it by God's grace. What are precepts? The word precepts as used in the Bible, specifically in the Old Testament, is from the um, Hebrew word, I think it's, uh, how do I pronounce it? Tzva, so T-S, Tzva, Tzva. Now, which literally means commandments, laws, ordinances, or a code of wisdom, or what you call a body of wisdom. So the word precepts, you know, at times, I don't want us to always be quick to be thrown off balance. I remember those days in school, you know, let me use school as an example very well. There was a chemistry we understood in secondary school, which was okay for secondary school. Now, entering university, we had the lecturer then, they used to call his name, because I didn't do, I did the geology, so but we had some chemistry courses we had to do as a geologist. So we had this guy then, Toby, the guy is very short, he's a very short guy, but this guy can trouble, he can teach you for five hours, and you just go out of the class. Immediately, you see that students have reduced, he will just write on the board, test. Because you'll be angry with him. Toby can get you angry. He's a very short man, very short man. He will, he will purposely get you angry. Everywhere is, he can teach you till 7 o'clock. Everywhere is dark. But just go out of the class. Now, when he started teaching the chemistry, the whole thing looks strange. But I won't say because it is strange, or contrary to what I was taught in secondary school, I would drop it and say what he's saying is not true. The best I would do for myself is to expand my knowledge capacity to receive what he's saying to me anew. So if we are quick to say, for example, I am okay with faith, hope, charity. You've taken time over the years to teach us faith, hope, charity, and we understood it, and it is fine. Now you are bringing something new again. Is it that there is a, a plot to always coin out new words and expand it beyond necessary so that, for example, I don't know how many of us have thought like this, but I'm sure a few of us have thought like that. God's servant comes one day, he wants to teach, he begins a new vista of understanding opens, and he begins to teach. And so we just feel, okay, well, it's like these people just like bringing new things so that it won't be that we will say that they don't have what to say so as to trap us down. Eh? Are we together? But really, that is not it. Because the Matthew chapter 1 you read today, there is an understanding of it you would have. In the next five years, Matthew chapter 1 will change before you. Because why? Who is breathing on scripture? You know, this morning, while I was just meditating upon this lesson, a scripture kept coming back to my mind in Timothy. He said, all scripture. Can you give it to me? Are given. Quickly, please. Is the system hanging? All right, Second Timothy three sixteen. Now I said, all scripture are what? Are what? Are given. So meaning, if they don't give you scripture, you won't have access into scripture. I can read Genesis to Revelation and end up more confused. 
I used to have a cousin. He's an alpha. Yeah? My mom's, no, my dad's younger brother. My dad's younger brother, yes. He's a cousin. He's an alpha. The guy is a very, you should know him now, Ratokwe. No, I'm not Pastor TJ. How will you have known him? <laughs> you know? The guy is an alpha. Now, his claim is that he has read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I don't doubt it. He's read the Quran also. And he will tell you where Bible contradicts itself. Now, the reason why Bible will be contradictory to him is because he is not giving. All scripture, not some. You see, even the Leviticus. You know when that is teaching Leviticus? Daddy would bring out New Testament doctrine from Leviticus. Why? All scripture are given. If they don't give you scripture, what you will read will be letter. So, looking at the idea of precepts, we need to know what precept is. Because precepts are not just, um, not just, are not just written words, they are revealed words. If they don't give you scripture, you will not see the profitability in scripture. Scripture is profitable. It's profitable for doctrine. It's profitable for reproof. It's profitable for correction. What is the correction? There is error in man that needs to be corrected. A man can read scripture. And when he's done reading the Bible... He can become a worse sinner than when he read it. Because also, around scripture, there are negative givings that is not the one the Holy Ghost gives. Are we together? I remember somebody was saying one time that uh, it's also an understanding. The sin that you are committing now Abi, the one you committed yesterday, the one you would ever commit has been forgiven. As true as it may be. As true as it may be. Eh? But you see that thing, there is an understanding of it you would have. You will perpetually be a sinner. So that, we won't say, that scripture was not given to you by the inspiration of God. Because really, who gives scripture? Is God. And who is this God? The Holy Ghost has to breathe upon Scripture. So at times when we see the acts of the Holy Ghost or the movement of the Holy Ghost upon ministers, is actually Holy Ghost giving them Scriptures. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 15 has been there for many years. But none of us, even despite the fact that we've read it, none of us have been able to bring out or hewn out the fact that there's what is called precepts and there's what is called lines from Isaiah 28. But God raised a man, an apostle. Eh? In Ephesians chapter 4, he said, Jesus gave gifts to men. And what was the essence of the gift? Is for the perfecting of the saints, for the edification of the body. So meaning, an apostle is meant to grow the body. Because why? Jesus gave him a gift to have access to scriptures. So, precepts, which we said the Hebrew meaning means commandment, law, or ordinances, is not just letter. Because many times, you know, we, we get confused here. And where the confusion is that I read this scripture. And this person is saying that this scripture doesn't mean this. It means something else. And I can also hide under scripture to counter what the person is saying. What is the scripture I will hide under? All scripture is of no private interpretation. So that's your own interpretation. It's your private interpretation. Eh? So I can use scripture to tie myself. But see, God raised some people to have access into healing life out of Scripture. I remember many years ago, 
I read the scripture. Now, if you know what that scripture means, it was meaning something else. It was talking about, I think it's in Psalms. It said, the wind passeth over it and is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. Eh? Now, that scripture really is talking about the breath of man. Eh? But you see, reading that scripture, another spirit came upon that scripture. Why? I was having a particular ailment in my body. And somewhere the interpretation I got, he said, for the wind passed over it and it is gone and the place thereof shall know it no more. The interpretation I got was that the wind that is coming is the wind of the Holy Ghost. It passes over my body and that thing is gone and my body will know it no more. That is not what that scripture is saying if I read it, read, read it literally. Are we together? So I can have the letter of that scripture, but I don't have the precept of it which comes by revelation. So if scripture is not revealed, I won't have access to the understanding of what scripture is saying. I can read Bible from now, from pali to pali for 50 times. And I will be more confused than when I began reading it. Because why? They have to give it. Can we say Amen. So the word precept, like we said, literally means commandments. By God's grace, we'll look at some of these words, you know, one after the other. Because at, at times the word, the word commandment also somewhere sounds like, sit down there. He has commanded me. Eh? Now, that is not what commandment really means. It can mean it in a sense. But that is not what commandment really means. Can we say Amen. So we also have laws. You know, um, I, was, I was ruminating on a thought recently. And what is a thought? When you say laws, you need a body preparation to be able to bear a law. For example, the law of aerodynamics, the law exists. How I many of us know aer aerodynamic law? The law is an existing law. Eh? The law is an existing law. Or for example, the law of gravity. There are different laws. Now, is it the law of aerodynamics? If you don't prepare a body called a plane, it cannot fulfill that law. Are we together? So, in preparing, in, in fashioning that law, or in saying that that law is functional, you need a body to be able to carry that law. Can we say amen? amen. Now, you see... Forgive me, I'm just taking it painstakingly because I don't want to rush it so that we will not miss some dots. So we find it vastly used in the Old Testament, the word precepts or laws or commandments or ordinances, but much more than its literal meaning. Eh? Precepts have a spiritual or applicative implication. In Isaiah 28, the prophet Isaiah the Lord through Isaiah the prophet, open our eyes to the fact that there is what is called precepts and lines. And that such precepts and lines are what one that has been weaned from milk and drawn from the breast, one who has become a child in their soul by reason of milk of the word ought to be exposed to. In, I think, is it Colossians? Or if, I think it's Colossians. It said that you, Colossians, that you henceforth be no longer tossed to and fro. Give me Colossians. Colossians. Ephesians, sorry. Yes. He said that ye henceforth be no more what? Children. Tossed to and fro and carried with every wind of doctrine. That when we got born again, every one of us, every one of us, not excluding anybody, when we got born again, we were babes. Or we were carnal. It's not a derogative set statement, so to, so to say. But it becomes derogative if after 20 years or 30 years, I am still a babe. Are we together? Because why? What we partook of in Genesis, what Adam ate, 
what Adam ate grew our soul to the point where our soul became what is called an old man. It's not an old baby or an old child. Are we following? Eh? So our soul became old, became an old man. So when we got born again, our spirit man is Christ. Who is a man? Christ is a perfect man. Are we following? Christ is who? A perfect man. Christ is a man that is going towards God. But our soul is a babe. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, he said, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. So a man, full grown, 40 years old, 50 years old, giving his life to Christ today, is a baby in his soul. He is just born. But a baby has what he should take that will make the baby what is called, I love the way God servant that you put it, to what is going to make the baby called, call the baby an LD child. So a baby should grow to become an LD child. And daddy gave an example. He said an LD child, for example, a child is Stephen. You see, when you see what the apostles' doctrine did, the apostles' doctrine raised LD children, full, grown with milk, full of the Holy Ghost. So, LD children are who you now begin to expose. That's what Isaiah was saying. He said, Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he cause to understand doctrine? Them that are drawn from the breast and weaned from milk. So when I am weaned from milk and drawn from the breast, I am ready for precepts. I am ready for revelation. In another way, Ephesians chapter 1, Paul was praying for the church in Ephesus. And he said to them, he said, After hearing of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love to all saints, this is what milk will do. Milk will make me have faith in Jesus. Good milk would make me have faith in Jesus. Not just for things. Faith in the person of Jesus. You know, at times, you know, I think it was uh, Pastor Paul, one of the days where he was minister, was he LSC or so? And I love that example very well. He used the word. The person that is trusting the Lord, having faith in Jesus for his healing, physical healing, and can tarry with it. He has milk, he doesn't have big revelation. He can tarry with it for Six months, one year, to wait until that thing goes. The mind of that person is different from the person that runs to Panadol. They are totally different mind. Something has happened to that soul in waiting on Jesus, having faith in Jesus for that long time. Can we say amen? So when you say a child is LD before God, is a child that has learned trust in God. So when that child comes to Jesus, they can now begin to teach that child knowledge. They can show him precepts. Can we say amen? amen. So, reading from my manual, one who has become a child in their soul by reason of milk of the word is the one that they can now begin to expose to precepts. What this reveals is that precepts and, of course, lines are things, commands, or ordinances that only one who has drank milk well ought to be given. You know, when God's handmaiden, our dear mommy in the faith, mommy Ellen, you know, when she talks about milk, I know at times some of us get a bit angry. No, be so. When she talk about things. But she mommy gave an example one day, and I can't forget. And what was the example? She said, when you look at the, the regalia of the priests, the larger portion of the dress is which color? 
is white. Is upon white eh, that red rests. Is upon white that heaven will rest. The blue is upon white that it will rest. So if you don't have enough white, when they want to rest the other one, it won't rest. So really, we should not be hungry with milk. Because it is in milk we have some training. You know, for example, when you look at, naturally speaking, a child that probably at his babyhood stage was not properly fed or whatever, that child is more susceptible to diseases than a child that maybe from day one, as he's crying, is already taking milk. You see the child, some of them, they call them a pom. Eh? The guy is big, fat. You carry the child and say, ah, what are you feeding this child? It's just milk. And the child is well fed. By the time you are moving the child from milk to proper food, it's very easy. But many a times, because we did not take milk well, some of the milk we took is milk for, for things, I don't even know what I should call that milk. Baba again called it Blue John. Eh? Because all that I want to use milk to do is to make sure that I have, uh, I have all my natural needs being met. Now, if that soul is now brought to the place where he should understand precepts, and they are now teaching him faith of the son, they are teaching him the dealings in the gospel, he will say, no, 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 I didn't sign up for this. So you now see that really that soul was actually not LD. Because really, who you would teach doctrine is an healthy child. An healthy child is not, you know, there's a way we look at a child, okay, maybe a two year old. No. An healthy child, I love the way God someone put it. He said, Jesus at 12, that's an healthy child. So when you look at the apostles, they were all 12 year old, they were healthy in the spirit. So when Paul was going to come, it wasn't difficult for Peter to accept him. So he could reckon with the fact that the way this guy is teaching, this is the wisdom that, this wisdom must have been the wisdom that God gave our brother Paul. This is a wisdom from God. I know this wisdom. So a child that is not healthy, when God is at work, it will be difficult for you to see that it's God that is at work. Can we say amen? So, from scriptures, we understand, reading from Emmanuel, that after milk, the next allocation of meal or words are meat of the word, which is Christ, which is the faith of the Son, and strong meat of the word, which is the Father, everlasting life, and salvation. Give me Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. He said, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracle of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. So obviously this church was between milk and strong meat. So that means they are meat. Are we together? They have become such that have need of the past allocation, which is milk, not strong meat. So that means they are in the middle, and the middle, they are in meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the meat, is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belonged to them. Who are of full age, even those who by reason of use have exercised their senses to discern, have exercised their senses, yes, to discern both good and evil. Give me First Corinthians chapter 3, just marrying the two together. <clears throat> First Corinthians 3. He said, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. So, meaning the first allocation that a believer should have is good milk. If we take milk well, then the meat 
will not be a difficulty. But the challenge, many a times, which we can't blame every one of us, is a national trouble. Eh? Is that we were born into very strange milks. Very, very strange one. National trouble, Pastor. Very strange milk. You know, because, for example, I tell you, you come to Jesus, and I, I was at Oweri, you know, uh, over the weekend. And the hotel I slept, a church is just across the road. And for like, I think an hour or two hours, they started service and they began fire prayers. They fired the prayer for two hours. After two hours, I just said, let's share the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. I was shocked because all the prayer, there was none there that is talking about anything that has to do with God. Die! It's only die! It's not MFM. It's another church, so don't think it's not. Eh? Die! You to die! Every enemy! And I wonder, by the time you finish this, now if I am praying for my enemies to die, and quite unfortunately, the way it has been taught, those enemies are not evil spirits. The enemy is next door neighbor. Eh? So by the time you get home, you are already going back home with anger in your soul against that person. So the person will not do something that will get you more angry. Hate will begin. So imagine such a confused child. You now want to begin to tell him that you know you actually can love your enemy. No. Because really, what you introduce to him as milk eh, is not milk. It's maybe a way to water. Confused white substance. Maybe it's yogurt. Not milk. The white substance is so confused that it made no sense to that child. So when you now want to bring the meat, which is as a result of the milk, because the meat is not standalone. The milk was pressed out of meat. He called them babes in Christ. It's not babes outside Christ. So that milk is actually the milk from the meat called Christ. So if you take the milk from Christ, when they bring the meat, you won't run away. Imagine Stephen, sir. Is it Stephen that you will teach faith of the son and Stephen will take his leg and run? Eh? Stephen was born into it. Stephen, the milk they had. You know, I think it was God saw and our daddy that was saying that. Imagine Peter wants to teach the church now. Eh? Or just imagine Peter on the day of Pentecost. Eh? The day of Pentecost, Holy Ghost came. And Peter began to teach, the Lord will meet your needs in the name of Jesus. I see you there. You have a problem. Receive it. As good as they are, they are provisions of the Lord. We are not negating it. The Lord knows. Because scripture says, said, your heavenly father knows that you have need of these things. So the Lord comes to... David said, you remember us in our low estate. So the Lord can actually meet our physical needs. But if that is the core anchor of the gospel, I have missed it. Daddy was teaching yesterday night. I'm sure a lot of us streamed, you know. And he said he went to a particular church to minister. And he opened, launched forth into the deep. That was the topic. And he opened John chapter 1 and he began to teach. After I finished, the man of God called him Baba. What are you doing? You are not helping me. I beg. You are not teaching anything. I say we should launch for people have problem. They have problem. So daddy said, okay. If that's the case, God, this garment, you know, say I don't put it down. Put it back. I said the Lord just told him to meditate on scripture. He said all he has to do the next day, he didn't open Bible. He just said, launch forth into the deep. And word of knowledge began. Eh? All he said was launch into the deep. Now, if such a soul that all, imagine you're coming to church, you're crying as you're coming to church, solve my problem, solve my problem. When they now begin to tell you that there are things you need to go through for the gospel's sake, you won't go through it. So it will be difficult to reveal life to us. So 
when they say revelation of the son, it looks like, why do they want to trouble my Israel? <laughs> Let my Israel be at peace. Because why? What we've been trained with, the milk that we had. Eh? So it will be difficult for God to expose such a church to revelation. Imagine going to a church like that now to teach, and I want to, I want to teach revelation. Holy Ghost will be shutting you down. Except you are not obedient to him. He will be shutting you down. Remember there was a, there was a particular place I had to go and minister and I wanted to use a particular route through, I want to sleep in, you know, faith of the sun. Just, just, they would have swallowed it, but they know. I tried, you know, everywhere was dry. I tried, everywhere was dry. I just switched. Jesus, can you, every, everywhere lit up. Ah, I said, okay, no wonder. Because why? Holy Ghost is also managing them. He knows that they can't take it. So they need to give us proper milk. When the milk is wholesome, then they cannot begin to bring what is called precept. Because precept is revealed. Can we say amen? amen. So this means both the meat, from my manual, means both the meat and the strong meat of the word consist of precepts and line. Having been established, what are precepts and what are lines? What are precepts? Precepts are the revealed knowledge of both Christ and the Father's person by the activity of teaching graces upon ministers who minister the word of God through revelatory graces and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Precepts are revealed knowledge. Now, if, like I said in the beginning, 2 Timothy that we read, 3.16, it said all scriptures are given. Now, when those scriptures are given to ministers who stand in the fivefold to teach the gospel, immediately they are giving those scriptures. The eye with which they are using to see the scripture is not the eye of letter. Something else just comes upon the scripture. For example, Pastor, you remember, sir, many, many, many years ago, before Daddy broke it down to faith of charity, what do we call charity? The best we call charity was love. Nobody defined charity as the last one you will do in Christ before you will now do fervent charity. And it, we didn't know it. Everybody just said, ah, no. In fact, I know a lot of ministers, when they get to that place, faith, hope, charity, they will tell you it's not actually charity, it's love. Is that not so? Eh? It's not charity. No, no, no. What the Bible actually means, you know, when charity, you know, the way you are charitable, you do charity things, you know, like that, it's just love. You know, and we change it. But something came upon God's servant that day. And as he was seeing it, he said, They abided faith, hope, charity. And that thing became established. And it became a doctrine called the doctrine of Christ. That is precepts. Are we together? So the spirit of revelation. Eh? is what coins out precepts. Are we following? Now, there is revelatory graces that is upon ministers. Precepts are not just scriptures. No. Precepts are understandings and knowledge of Christ's person or the Father's person unveiled in the scripture. It has to be revealed. Scriptures don't come alive except it is revealed. You know, at times when God's servant that daddy is teaching or any of our pastors, one joy that wells up within my soul is that the Bible is alive. How many of us have the same witness? The Bible is alive. Because you cannot know why Malachi said what he said. So Malachi is connecting itself now to Peter. How? Is revelation. Now, you see, we need that for us to first understand Scripture. If we don't understand Scripture, they can't command us out of what we don't understand. The reason why it will be, for example, you know, God's handmaiden, our mommy, would have a situation and she will get to the place and you will hear Holy Ghost, hey, morning lights. 
why she can reckon with morning light is because she already understood the, she understands the precepts of morning light. So Holy Ghost can command her out. For example, when you say lines, lines are like measurements. They are like rules. I cannot measure you above what you have. Eh? I cannot. It's not possible. For example, a child is a primary six student. Uh, what do they call it? Is it school living? Primary six. First cousin living certificate. Now, what he has is primary six. Now, I want to measure him. And I'll bring dy dx. Eh? What have I done? I will get no result. So you see, at times, you know, at times, back then, those days, when God's servant, our pastor said, Daddy says it, I wonder why are they talking like that? Some people will bring some commandments that they will say, Holy Ghost gave them. And Daddy will say, Ronnie. I said, Why? I said, like, Holy Ghost. I said, No. Why? Why can't Holy Ghost command that person? He doesn't have the precepts. They've not taught, he, they, there is a measure of revelation. For example, those days, the kind of obedience is commandment that the Lord is bringing away now, some things that we need to do. They didn't bring it to us 15 years ago. Eh? But when the season of everlasting life began to open, they began to bring some commandments that even you yourself will feel like, Kuku kill us. Yes, that's the truth. They have to kill us. Because if they don't die, we will not live. Can we say amen? amen? So precepts, like I said, are revealed knowledge. Precepts are the commandment, the com are the commanded knowledges and understanding of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 16, we'll read it, but let, let's just go on. Anyone can go into the Bible to preach or teach anything. I remember when we were preparing for our marriage, <clears throat> I had to, you know, attend a particular church, not mention names. I had to attend a particular church because, of course, my wife's parents go to that church. So I had to be there for, um, for them to introduce us to the church as it's been done normally. And I got there, and the man of God mounted the pulpit and began teaching and truly opened the Bible. But, man, what was brought out from the Bible? When it was done, to make you know, I won't say what he brought out, but to make you know what was brought out, the man that took the mic to lead prayer after the man of God, this was his prayer point. Pray now that your glory will shine like that of Lionel Messi. <laughs> and people began to pray. Hot there was a guy that sat beside me. The guy slept almost all through. But when they began prayer. <laughs> so that will tell you what was taught from scripture. So you can pick up the Bible and teach anything. You can teach anything from the Bible. But, say, but those who the Lord Jesus raised to teach him. It's called the knowledge of him. Are commanded on what. They must teach. Jesus said he has told, he has, uh, the Father has commanded him what to say and what to speak. God commanded him. There is what to say and what to speak. So we don't just utter words because I just finished a big bowl of ever and I'm overtly excited and I want to preach. Yeah? I preach out of what I have been commanded. You know, at times you see, you think, you know, we need to understand the manner of our parents in the Lord. You see, God someone sit down and it will be cracking joke, cracking joke, cracking joke. He's not cracking joke. He's just finding a route into what God wants him to say and what he should speak. Because it is in what God is saying that there is life. He said, now the hour has come, which now is that the dead will hear the voice of the Son. Now, if the Son is not uttering his voice, dearly beloved, we would not live. 
And to live according to scripture is to bring forth a life that is at par with what scripture is revealing. So, reading from my manual, precepts are not just letters of the word, but revealed truths of Jesus' person. Can we shout hallelujah? Now, a man can have precepts, the revelation of Christ's person or of the Father, but that does not mean that he or she have the life, the nature, or the character as a life. It's not yet his life. And this is where lines come in. This is where lines come in. Because I can have the precepts. I can, like Pastor Jesus was saying, I can gather all the materials. But if I am not building, if I am not building, then I just have a place full of materials. So to convert materials to life, I must build. So in building is where you see lines. Lines are necessary for raising the building. You see why? Every one of us, we were raised by a negative line. We are a construction. We are a kind of a building. Negative building. A dilapidated structure that is okay for evil spirit to work with. Why do you think it's easy for us to do things that are anti-God? It's lines. One demon will just sit down on you and control you and say, do this. And you are helpless. Really, with lines, we are helpless. Because why? They know we have their precepts. Over the years, man had gathered precepts of evil spirits. Over the years. So their lines is very easy. Very, very easy. They just tell you, oh boy, you see the way you are going. The way you are going. Tobacco continue in Nigeria. Honestly, you are gone. Nothing will come out of your life. And truly, when you look at all your situation. Everything around you, nothing will come out of your life. Because that your life, nothing should come out of it. There is another life. Because that your life is not your life, it is their life. They said, when Christ, who is our life? So you have a life that is not that life that you are holding on to. But they want you to, you know, I love God's servant's explanation yesterday. He has said it many times about that evil spirit that tormented him for many years. Eh? I use that evil spirit as to use a precept to tie him. Eh? What was the precept? Restitution. He also troubled me too. A lot of people died because of it. They heard the gospel of restitution. Uh, you say, I want to go and restitute without wisdom. You go to a family, maybe the guy was a thief. He killed their firstborn. He killed their mother. Now he's born again. He said, he wants to go and restitute. They will kill you. And they will be justified for killing you. If they can't kill you physically, they'll find a way of poisoning you. So that thing tied daddy for many years. He sees scriptures, he's seen another thing. He just sees scripture, he can't believe it. Because the evil spirit says, You say, you, you, Bible, this Bible is not for you. Eh? So he said, When we see activity of evil spirit, why it looks as if, so, quote unquote, we are helpless around doing negative things. Pastor, we have the precepts. Eh? Abundant. Much revelation. Negative ones. Is that by the abundance of revelation that was given unto me? Eh? So, we have abundant evil revelation of malice. So, even when they say, don't keep malice, you can hear a very hot message and you know you should not keep malice. When you see that sister, something just rise. I don't like her. Lines. Lines. So when you say lines, where lines come in is that they would have made sure that we've gathered. You see what God's servant our dad is doing is that they are bringing piles of materials every day. Immediately you see a minister stand on this podium and he's teaching. What they are landing upon our house is upon our site because we are a site. They are landing materials, Beam. Maybe that day when they come, when daddy thought, after, you know, that four hours or five hours that daddy did with us, eh? That five hours. So it's possible that for some people, that five hours, they were able to supply like 10 bags of cement. 
Pastor only. Because our capacity to receive also determines whether we will take it. Eh? Because out of that five hours, we will sleep two hours. <laughs> if you accumulate the sleep, it's two hours. Five minutes is gone. Another ten minutes is gone. So maybe we're able to gather ten bags of cement. But it's a breakthrough if you get ten bags. You know what ten bags will do? Ten bags will build a wall. It will do a lot. So when the materials are now on site, they will now need lines. Lines will now begin to instruct you, put it here. This one, put it here. No, 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 no. The structure of this building, because number one, the, the architectural plan is not in our hands. It's in his hands. So he knows the house that, he knows the way Pastor T.J. as a house should be built to house him. Eh? There are instructions he will give him. He won't give Pastor Telema. Because he knows what is correct. There is a lot of defect on the site. He knows what is correcting. That if I keep doing this one, I would have corrected this. In the next two years, I should correct this one. When it's done, I will move into another place. So that's where lines now come in. Because we've gathered materials. Can we turn to the next page? It's a very big introduction. By next week, God, God willing, we'll go further into it. What are lines? What are lines? Revelation chapter 21. Are we following? Because the essence, um, the thought in God's servant's heart is that when this is done, eh, we will be able to convert all the materials that will be coming from henceforth to life. We will be able to convert it. It's, not, it's, it's painful. You know how, how Paul would have felt that ah, after them as well this year, is, oh boy, Oh, boy, they, oh, they're familiar with the law. I love the way Pastor Thompson put it. It's very, very funny. He said, you know, there, there was no telephone. They just sent Demas on errand. Demas, quickly take this thing. Lossy. Go, go to, go to Troas. But they throw us back the ball. So they were trying to call. Ah, this guy should have been back from Troas. <laughs> what was it there? So what did they Ah, we saw him. That's what I Ah, I didn't send him there. Oh, the jackpot. The guy is gone. Oh, the escape. The guy is gone. I'm not coming back. Eh? The guy just escaped. Hallelujah. Revelation 21. He said, and he talked with me, and he that talked with me had a golden reed to do what? To measure the city and to measure the gates thereof and the walls thereof. The city lied four square and the length is as great as the breadth and he measured the city with the reed the reed is the measuring rod, 12,000 for long, and the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the walls thereof and 140 and 4 cubits according to the measurement measure of a man that is of the angel. Now, of course, we know that this city is not really talking about physical city. This city are men. For example, in scriptures, Hebrews, except for we have come to Mount Zion, to, uh, we've come to... Give me that place in Hebrews. The scripture ran away. Several have come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God. Now, of course, who is in Mount Zion? It's not just the physical city. The city are a people. So what the angel was measuring was measuring the people. The lines are the measure of life that Christ's life and the Father's life are measured or quantified by. They are what? The measure by which Christ's life or the Father's life are quantified by. So, for example, I'll give an example to it. What we say lines is the measure by which we quantify Christ's life or the Father's life. Now, there are read of measurement by instruction that when is measured out to you, and you cannot do it. We know the measure that you are in. Are we together? Eh? For example, I measure out a line from charity to a soul. Holy Ghost measures out a line of charity to a soul. And after measuring it out to the soul, the soul cannot do it. You can't say that soul has charity. 
Are we together? Eh? You can't say that soul. Because, you see, I want us to know one thing. This was some wisdom I, I got around some of this, you know, wisdom of the Holy Ghost through our parents. We, man, man was little lower than angel, right, at creation. Now, Satan was not lower than man at creation. Hmm? So, Satan was a cherub in this present. Now, when Satan fell and eventually fell man, Man fell so low, lower than where he was originally. Now, for each climbing I have to do, he said, for we wrestle not against principalities and powers. Now, you see, those principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places, they are beings of lines. Eh? Inside of them, there are spoils of war that I should get from an evil spirit that has configured me to always keep malice. That when I am instructed by the Holy Ghost because of the abundance of precepts that have been measured out to me, when I'm instructed by the Holy Ghost and I am able to win that evil spirit, that win is not localized. It's not what? It's not localized. That win eh, is global. So meaning if I take you from Nigeria and you have dealt with that evil spirit, if I take you from Nigeria and take you to China, that same evil spirit, you are beating it. So already there is a measure that has been accrued to you that this guy will deal with this evil spirit anywhere. So you see, when we say lines or quote-unquote, instructions or commandment. The reason why we play with it or we don't take it really serious is because we don't know what is a back of each obedience's obedience you do. Each obedience sir, that we do as a result of a line measured to us is actually a beating or a falling or a spoiling of an evil spirit. You know what he said concerning Jesus in Colossians chapter 2? He said, I haven't spoiled principalities and powers. How did he spoil them? You see, when Jesus, for example, was at the cross, eh? at the cross, and he had a, number one, before he went to the cross, it was a commandment that he had of God to lay down his life. Are we together? Now, that commandment to lay down his life, even at the cross, it was also a commandment for him to pray for them that were persecuting him and nailing him to the cross. You see, at that time that Jesus was obeying that instruction, an evil spirit was being dealt with. So each measurement of lines that they measure out to us is not just a careless instruction. There is actually an evil spirit around that you should beat. Are we together? Do we understand what I explained? I'll go over it again in another way. Now, the same way the Holy Spirit, reading from Emmanuel, the same way the Holy Spirit is and can be given or received in measure, so also the life of either Christ or the Father can also be received in measures in our soul depending on the amount of knowledge given to us per time. Hence, precepts must, you know it is a line must be upon line. It is precepts must be upon precept. Why? Precept has to be properly laid. It has to be clearly seen. I need to be able to see the precept. I need to be able to see that, okay, there is charity, there is what is called fervent charity. There is that seed that there is a time of incubation that will bring me to the point where I'll be born again. So when those precepts are clearly seen, those, it is out of those precepts, they will bring lines. They will bring instructions. They will bring commandments. So you will be in a season when everything looks hot. Everything is just fiery around you. Eh? 
Instruction is coming. Everything is fiery. You are ready. You just know by precept. Okay. This is what they said. Maybe I'm in the season of fervent charity. Ah. So this person that I'm refusing to love, if I don't love this person, I will not be born. So you can put a definition around on your season, sir, around the instruction that is coming to you, that this thing is actually a time and a season around me, that if I'm able to do this, I would move to this. Or it could be in the season of when they are trying your hopes. Faith, hope, charity. They are just trying your hope. You are just like, okay, hey, well, okay I, want to, I want to do this. And I say, okay, but why? Holy Ghost is just trying to instruct you why. It's as if this is failing. That one is failing. You try this one, it's failing. I'll be like, ah, okay, what else will I do that will not fail? Eh? And maybe you now begin to say, okay, can I hope for things invisible? And that one is successful. Okay, they want to retune my hope. So that means those hopes are negative hopes. So you see, if we don't really understand, really, 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 the reason for precepts, when they are, you see, when daddy will sit down, actually, you know when Pastor Thompson at times, you know Pastor Thompson, is a, he will be laying it line by line. Eh? You see why they are doing all of that? It's not for us to, so that when I come out and they say, oh yeah, eh, come and tell me what they shared. It's good. It's necessary for us to be able to share it. But it's also for us to be able to interpret our seasons. Because all that is being taught the season will come upon us. And Holy Ghost will now begin to say that, you see what was being taught concerning hope. What I'm actually doing is I want to purify your hope. He said he that had this hope in himself, purified himself even as he is pure. So what they are doing in that season to us, it might just be that they want to purify my hope. Eh? Or they want to further establish my faith in the Son. So I will be able to properly define my season because of precepts that have been laid. Can we say amen? amen? So the same way, like I said, the same way the Holy Ghost life can be measured, the life of the, of the Father and the life of Christ can also be measured to our soul, depending on the amount of knowledge given to us per time. Hence, precept must be upon precept, then line upon line. It is the degree, it is the degree or depth of precepts that determines the measure of lines that will be measured out. So they will not measure line above precepts. Meaning, the Lord would not instruct you to do what you have not been taught. Huh? You know, at times, a lot of us, and it's because some students don't read, Back then in school, I remember I was, because I was a bit close to uh, a number of my lecturers in my final year, you know, close to very, very, even almost the HOD knew me. I was quite close to all of them. So one of them, one day, out of closeness, they have this program. It's like a diploma program. They call it a SLT, Science Lab Tech. So, so the students were doing the exam, so they said I should come and vigilate. I was a final year student, so I was feeling cool. Like a lecturer. I was invigilating. So I met this young lady. Her, her sheet was blank. So I was surprised. I said, why are you not writing? She said, they didn't teach us. Ah. I was curious. Because to an extent, that diploma course was being run by my department. So I would know the lecturer. So I said, what's the name of this lecturer? He said, Dr. Dushote. Ah. I said, of all the lecturers I know in the Department of Physics, the man is one of the most committed lecturers. If the lecture is starting 8 o'clock, two minutes to 8, Dr. Dushote is in class. And he will finish his period, and he will take time to teach you well. There is no time he's not in class. But I was like, okay, if you say you are not taught, how come the other students are writing? So obviously, she did not read. And she was ready to fail. So many a times, we would go through some things and they want to instruct us. Eh? But because we did not read, 
we will say we were not taught. You know, you can't put, point accusing figure to God's servant, Daddy Goke, or Daddy Ye, Pastor Maker. You see, where Daddy is laboring all the time. You can't say you are not taught. It's because you did not read. Because really, they would instruct you by what you were taught. So the essence of gathering precepts is not to gather it so that I can, uh, I can shine and miss my brethren. Eh? The essence of it is for proper calibration of my season. Proper interpretation of what I am going through per time. Can we say amen? amen. So put in another way, lines are commandments or instruction that we are given by the Holy Ghost to do what? To do what? To do what? So lines are not revelations. They are not understandings. They are not knowledges that ministers preach and teach so that we can know Christ or the Father. Rather, lines are the ways of the life of Christ or the Father painted or brought to us by the Holy Spirit as instructions or commandments on what to do. I always love a scripture in John. Is it John or Matthew? It says it concerning Jesus. Jesus told Philip, you go do so, so, and so. But scripture says, he himself knew what to do. So ability to know what to do part time. Eh? is the blessing any soul can have. That I am faced with a beloved brother. Maybe, for example, I just feel a particular brother is shining more than me. Eh? Or a brother is more privileged than me. Hmm? Now, in those situations, precepts have been given for you to know which line, what to do when the time comes. Now, Holy Ghost will not take out of those materials, which are the precepts, eh? which are the knowledges. Now, Holy Ghost takes out of it in that situation and command you, love this brother. Now, if I can love, the best I can do is to pray. Strengthen me to obey you. Because the way out of that particular thing the way out for me to be built is to obey and to love that brother. If I'm not loving that brother, my dear, with all my precepts, no way. Oh. So lines are not what is taught. For example, you've had one very wonderful person, great mommy and missus that talks about lines mostly. It's our mommy, mommy, early. It's all those things that mommy is talking about. They are lines. Sir? Raw line preaching. Raw lines. Go and hug Tessie is a line. We remember the story now. How can you be hugging Tessie? Tessie, number one, is your subordinate. You brought Tessie to the company, and Tessie is now misbehaving to you. I won't hug Tessie. I will sack Tessie. <laughs> so, for, for you to see a life, when I say a bean is a bean of love, you know, I was telling somebody something recently, and I said, God, I saw, I saw one conversation with Mommy Helen, and I was, I said, Mommy, Mommy, say, no. How was the conversation? I have one very, one smoker. I said, you know the car now, that my Nissan. That Nissan, the car looks like a car that you should go and park somewhere. Eh? So one day, I drove the car to Ifako, and I know I had something like that, but of course, finer. And mommy said, Mommy just saw it. I said, Because you want to know, Mommy, because you want to know. It's not Anuska, but this one is not as fine as Anuska. She wasn't seeing it. And you think she's lying. No. There is a high. I've got many a times the reason why we conclude things the way we conclude things is because we have a negative high. And how to purify that high is by lines. Is the Lord commanding you knowing how to abase? They will just bring a season upon you, just know that this season, what they are telling me is, Abes, Abes, you are, you, are, you are feeling too big. You are looking bigger than yourself. Abes, what they are doing is that they are reconfiguring. They are actually working on your building. 
So lines are designs of the Holy Ghost. Because really, the giver of lines is Holy Ghost. Yeah? It's Holy Ghost that will come and breathe upon the scripture. The man of God has taught. They've laid the precepts. They've gone over it over and over and over again. You have the precepts. None of us can say really that we are not, we are devoid of precepts. Where we lack ability is in execution. And that's where we draw back. And scripture says, well, you see, when, you, when you fail in the days of adversity, what is the problem is that your strength is little. So what I should be praying, Lord, increase my strength. I need might to be able to obey the Holy Ghost. So when lines are coming, lines are designed for correction. For restructuring us. I am not correct. The fact that I still see my brother as a competitor, I am not correct. To correct it, they have to bring lines. They have to show me that there is a better hope. You know, you can look at me in a living way, and one day, all my hope is that one day, one day, one day, I won't say the one day. <laughs> eh? Now, if you are not careful and you are there, that is a wrong... So, Holy Ghost, and Holy Ghost knows the one day in your mind. He knows it. So, he begins to bring lines. He begins to bring lines. He brings instructions. He brings instructions. I remember one time, the Holy Ghost just stood on a matter. On a matter. Let me give us an example. I've shared it testimony before. I'm not ashamed to share it. There was a particular convention. Believers convention. Eh? For seven days, seven days, I wasted money, wasted investment, wasted everything. Seven days, convention, seven days. We prayed though for how many months? And seven days, I wasted it away. Why? They didn't give me tongues to interpret. They didn't give me. So I sat down, and I was angry. They would just keep passing the mic, passing the mic, passing the mic. I was like... Tani Moshe. So you see, I have precepts. Eh? But I cannot take line to correct an error. Because that thing is an error. I am not in church to interpret tongues. I'm not even in church to be an HOD. I'm not in church to be a deputy HOD. I'm not in church to shine. I'm in church to inherit life. So, after that episode, I felt so miserable. So, Holy Ghost now began to stay on my neck. Stay on my neck on a particular. He just kept staying. Out to a job. As I'm entering church, he's giving an instruction. Hey, until today. But I stayed on it. And I was able to go through that period. And after that period, I became a free man. Free, very free. And I know there is still yet more freedom. Very free. If, if, if there is no tongue, I'm not disturbed. If there is, I'm not disturbed. I'm just enjoying myself. I came here to get God. You know one of the things the Holy Ghost told me? It was a scripture, I think Matthew 18. He said, what I agreed with you. He said, a, 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 what's it called now? A, a householder went a particular hour. Gathered, you see, it was the first, because it's that thing of right, sense of right. Sense of right. To correct it, we need lines. Eh? So, so, Holy Ghost, he went out. He went out. He went out that day. He gathered the first. He was only the first people that he brought to the house to work that they agreed with. Go and read your Bible very well. He was the first. So, after he agreed with them, he agreed with them a penny a day. Have The next one, he didn't have any agreement with them because really, they have no sense of right. Nobody was employing them. They were useless already. So, they just helped them. Anything they get, they are okay. Eh? So Holy Ghost now began to remind me. He said, my agreement with you is a penny a day. I didn't sign an agreement with you that you become a pastor in your living way or EGFM. What I signed with you is a penny a day. What's a penny a day? Eternal life. So I don't have any other agreement with you. All this what you are doing that you are crying. You are just wasting your time. You see that thing? The things talk. That was a line. You see that thing? It's not, it's not just precepts. That is a line that began to correct an error. Because that thing is called an error of life. It's an error of life. So to really correct error of life, Holy Ghost will take from precepts and begin to give us lines. Instruct you. You are not here to become HOD. 
You know, somebody can be angry that ever since I've been in church, they are not making me do anything. Do life. You have something to do. You are not just doing it. Do life. Become. I'm sure in the days of Anna and Simeon, nobody knew them. Abby? Nobody knew them. If they knew them, they would have written about them in scripture. If not for the birth of Jesus, who would have known that there's somebody called Anna and Simeon that has been praying? Scripture says she was a widow of eight score and seven years. So meaning her widowship is at seven years. So how old really is the woman? She was a widow of eight score and seven years. Is it four score? Four score, yes. Four score, 80 years. Four score and seven, seven years. So 87 years of widowship. And all she was doing is doing life. She wasn't an high priest. She wasn't a priest. She was not known in Israel. The only thing she was praying for was the consolation of you and me. Because the consolation of Israel is that Jesus will come. So can I take up a duty of taking lines to correct my nature? So the essence of lines really is for change of nature. Can we say amen? amen. So the father... Either the life of the Father, rather, lines are the ways the life of, the, of either Christ or the Father painted or brought to us by the Holy Ghost as instructions or commandment of what to do so that we can inherit the very nature, the habit of Christ or of the Father. The use of the word lines dep depicts and implies a rule, a rod, used to measure Lines in itself shows that we cannot come into all of the Father's life or Christ's life at once because it's in measurement. In conclusion today, it is good to stress that precepts and lines are not just Old Testament principles or ordinances. The Old Testament saints, true, de though dead in their spirit, grew in their soul. Of course, we know that someone like Jacob is a father. Our father Abraham is a father. And our father, Isaac, is also a father. Jacob himself said, he said, the days of my sojourn is not like that of my father. So meaning, he was a less father than Isaac. And Isaac was a lesser father than Jacob. But God was proud to call himself their God. So, though they were dead in their spirit, these men grew in their soul. From babyhood, to childhood, to adulthood, to fatherhood stages in their soul. True milk meat and strong meat of the word of God respectively. Now in the New Testament though we are now alive in our spirit through the new birth our soul as newborn babies still needs to grow from these three go through these three stages of babyhood childhood, adulthood and even come into the fatherhood through the milk, meat and the strong meat of the word of God. Hence the principle highlighted in Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9 to 10, transcends the Old Testament era. It's a working principle for anyone whose soul is going through an upward mobility or an upward journey and growing to inherit all of God. So like I said, in conclusion, the essence of the, the giving of lines, the giving of... Uh, the giving of precepts is for nature formation. Can you say with me nature formation? Say nature formation. So the Lord wants to raise a people that don't just have the vocabulary, eh? that don't just have the, the putting together of the word or the coinages of the word, but a people that have life. The essence is for us to inherit life. If I'm not inheriting life, I can just have a very big head and a tiny body. And when it's like that, you won't be able to walk. That's abnormal. So I should be able to walk by what is revealed. When they reveal it and the Holy Ghost instructs me, I measure out a walk. Can we say amen? Can we just lift our hands this morning and give thanks to our Father? Hallelujah. Are we thanking the Lord? So much blessing, so much breakthrough. Let's do it a bit actively. Can we, if the Lord has truly blessed you and spoken to you today, can you say, Father, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. 
I'm grateful. We, we are not taking it for granted that which you brought our way even this morning. Thank you for the exposition of your word. Thank you, Lord, for, for insight. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for expanding our hearts and helping us to comprehend even the things that will cause us to relate with your dealings over us in this season. Precepts and lines crucial to inheriting the promise, even the life of the overcomer. Father, we are grateful. We thank you for the utterance upon your servants. Thank you, Lord, for many examples to drive it home. Thank you, Lord, for the atmosphere, oh God, of understanding that was upon us, even over the house. We are grateful, our Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. Awesome, awesome indeed. I understand precepts and lines much better than when it started. I'm one of the people, I might be confess, that I've been waiting for this study. You know, it's when you just say precepts and lines, and you say, okay, yes, yes, hmm, wow. Hmm. But you know, it's not really entering the way it's not going to enter. I thank God for how the Lord has used our pastor to really uh, open it up and uh, help us to comprehend um, so I think with this understanding now, we were able to relate better with um, the many things that Lord is bringing our way as a company that is moving towards the inheritance of the promise. Let's say amen. All right, just let me just touch on uh, two or three things that Pastor said and just say them again uh, for emphasis. So, um, um, I like the, the, the build that the Lord used Pastor to build from having, having to relate with um, what we might call, uh, well, we don't call it that, but what people might call uh, overstretching of scriptures. Now, the reason why it's like that for a lot of us is that we are in seasons where these things are actually being put together. There are many things you are, that are results of precepts over the years, or what Pastor called, which is true, revelation, that you use, that you quote as scripture, but it's not scripture. It's not scripture. It's not scripture verbatim from scripture. But you have quoted it as scripture. And you quote it to tomorrow. Can I give you one example? Can I give you one example? Should I give an example? Where is it written in your Bible that the expectation of a righteous shall not be cut off? Open it. Who has quoted that as scripture before? Raise your hand. When you are praying, Lord, you said in your word, the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. You have said it. Search it out. You were not there when the precept was put together by doctrine. You were not there. You were born into it. It's part of my inheritance. It is, a, is it a lie? Is it a lie? No, it's not a lie. Is it joined together of two scriptures that brought forth that thought and now it is scripture, quote and unquote, you are using it. So when you see precept and line, don't say, hey, we are stretching it. When they were stretching, I'm sure the people, some people said they were stretching that one one time like that. And it has blessed you so much. You have used to pray, you have seen breakthrough, you have testimonies around it. Can I give you another one? No, don't worry, that one is okay. But Bible says the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established. Can I give you another one? Go open your Bible where it says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You will not find it. Look for it. I see, you see, it's blank. They are searching. They are searching. It's not there. Have you quoted it as scripture? Now, that is even a little more stretching than precept and non precept. What am I trying to say? In the formation of doctrine, you see, doctrine is not formed by you as Pastor Petty is so beautifully. It's not formed by just picking a, a, a verse and running with it. It takes, it takes the tutelage. Oh, yeah, let's come down. Be here, be here, Don't worry. You're still searching. It's not there. I can tell you categorically it's not there. Don't waste your Google search. Don't waste your internet. It's not there. It's here. This is where it is. You know that there's a man thinking in south, so he is. You know it. Because you have used it. And you, you cannot, your scriptural sense cannot disprove that. You know it. But it's not written over. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say when the Lord is putting together, think, say, as he. Thank you. But I have as a man. And if you read the context of the scripture, it's not a good one. It's not a good one. But there is an understanding of it. Like the one Pastor, uh, Pastor Yola quoted about how he got healing. What is that scripture he got quoted now? About wind blowing. If you take it in the context, that is why you cannot teach precepts to a company who are void of the spirit of wisdom and revelation. You cannot. You will argue yourself out of blessing. You will just keep arguing and arguing, but that's not the context. It's not the context. It's not the context. You will forget that the Bible is a map. 
is a cryptic book that will open to you as it likes. It's not because you read it whoa, 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 that it opens so you know how I've labored. No, it's not. It is according to something that the pastor said. You know, he didn't say it, but it just, it just jumped in me as he was saying. Many of us have forgot, have not probably realized that understanding is given. Understanding is not like when you go to school. Oh, oh, okay. They gave you. Now, if they gave you, they did not give another person. What do you have that you were not given? So when you have understand, especially around Revelation, it's not something that you just fetched because you were studious. They gave you. It's an act of mercy. Because some people, will, some people are not, it is not a portion for them to see what you are seeing. Not because God is evil. But because that is what, God is not demanding it from them. He's just not demanding it. And he's sovereign. He can do that. You, you, before you open one verse, pia, 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 please are jumping, pia, pia, you close it, you walk a car, car, car. Papa Higgins labored how many weeks? How many? 50, thank you, sorry, I would say weeks. 15 years to get what? Man is a spirit, he has a soul, and lives in a body. You, where were you for the 15 years that he was laboring? Now, where is it in scripture that man is a spirit, he has a soul, and lives in a body? It's a precept. It's a precept that you have lived by it. Now remove that precept. You have no footing on the word of righteousness. Remove it. Don't joke with precepts. The Lord is setting, you see when you say precept and line, that itself is a precept. That must rest in the heart of anybody that's going to end well. Why? Because I thank God the way Pastor, God used Pastor Elad to this. So, so painstaking. See, when they remove precept from your leg, there will be no line formed in you. And let me tell you, what you are living by now are lines. How you are living now is lying, no? Is lying. Subconsciously, you are just doing things. You are not thinking it. They installed a program. It's there. Or to run. You need a counter program, a virus called a precept. To first of all, remove it. And I thought, I heard when you remove a virus first, uh, a, a, a program for the, uh, when you delete a file, it doesn't really go. What I heard from Itibu, it's not there. It's what you have just erased. It's the pathway to it. No way, with that one, I just, let me not lead you around that IT path. But they just, they just remove the pathway. For us to expunge it completely, they have to write something else on top of it. Something else must be in that space. So every line, negative line we have in us, they must. They must. I can see why Satan will fight your understanding of this. Because if they don't install another line, there's nothing you can do. Look, I can give you permanent residence. I can teach you the code of conduct. I can put you in that land. Your line will come out. You will kick your foot against a stone. You will never say, ouch. Yeah, we'll come out. We will know where you are from. Even though you have permanent residence in your pocket. I'm an American. I've tasted my tongue. Yeah, there's one girl. Beautiful one girl, Nigerian. She's an athlete. She's, I don't know where she's a American now, but I think she's a Nigerian. But she, she speaks, oh, no, tell you, no, I'm, no, 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 no. When this girl will, then I asked her a question. I said, did you ever think uh, you will run that fast? Okay, ha, no. I said, ah, this one, oh, my God, you lay. Oh, my God, you lay. That, that, you see, that was not, that was not, you see, it was, it was precious. It was just, hey, man, hey, man, hey, man. When this thing, what about you? Ha, no. I said, ah, I know you. So you see, that is where Satan waits for us. It's around precept. He's, he's not too bothered. He can't be bothered. Okay, say baby. I thought it was tongues. He can be bothered. But you see, where he will sit and try to confuse you more and things is the installation of lines. Because it will take a line to remove the line he puts. There's no way to escape it. You have to retrain and retrain and retrain to remove that. Ha! Ah, no! From that person. Now it can happen. It can happen. The earlier it happens, the better. But it can happen. Depending on how long that line has been in you. That line has been in you for, for 45 years. Wow. It's very difficult to remove. Very, very difficult to remove. So what the Lord is painting for us through this, this study is an understanding of how we will, I like the way Pastor Ayer put it, we will take all the knowledge, you know, all the learnings, all the citizenship education we did, you know, the exams we faced. They now gave us our PR, our sample, our pocket. Now, and then you can walk the streets and say, yes, I'm a citizen, I'm a citizen. We will know your true citizenship by how you live. 
So when Paul said, our conversation is in heaven, what was he saying? There is a manner of life that is there. And me thrown beings that I must exemplify here. So that wherever I find myself, they say a throne being is here. Throw me to China. Throw me to lake. No, not lake. Throw me to hell. Like our Lord Jesus, can't throw you to lake. Not lake. Throw me to hell. Jesus went to hell with lines. He couldn't stay because he was incompatible with that environment. Incompatible. They, they had to vomit him. It takes lines also to go to lake. That line is what gave rise to a resurrected body that can survive there. Don't joke with lines. So, but we cannot, as I said, we cannot, we cannot, we can't come into lines without, first of all, understanding precepts. Now, how do precepts come? You see how you're sitting down and hearing about fish and two cup. Hmm? You hear that one. You sit down. You hear, you hear, you hear breath of almighty. You see all those things that somehow seem confusing. It's not confusing. Keep taking it in. Keep taking it in. Listen to the message again and again. You don't know where, sometimes you don't even know where that thing is landing. From there, as Pastor put it, the Lord will now fetch instructions. Now, those instructions are the link between that precept and life. It does not make sense to a natural man. It doesn't. How will my, how will my paying attention to fishes and two cup empower me to love more? That line is in the Holy Ghost. He knows the connection. You see, there's no, there's no casual phrase around the spirit of wisdom and revelation. No. You may not see the connection because of where you are, where I am, but the connection is there. If the Lord, if the Lord is telling you, you know, sometimes you have an issue and tells you to, to go in a route that you don't think we ever solve that issue. It's exactly what it is. That's exactly the way line precepts are converted to lines. It may never, it may never actually make sense to your head, but if you follow through, I can, I, can, I can boldly say that sometimes what creates the environment for those instructions to come are those things you have heard. If you hadn't heard those things, some of the instructions will never come your way. They will never come. They won't come. So, so in, our, in our pursuit, as it were, of, of becoming, so I want to be like Christ, I want to be like Christ, I want to have, it comes with, first of all, laying of the precepts, gathering the pieces, or as Pastor put it, gathering the precept, the pieces of the materials to sight for the Lord now to lay the stratas. Those lines are stratas, layers, as it were, layers of his person. In the end, Lord is trying to build a person or a conversation that can stand in any environment. And will be a representative of our Lord Jesus Christ in deed and in truth. That is the boast. That's actually the boast of heaven. That I have so installed in him my life that I can take him anywhere. You know, that's what necess necessitated the confrontation between devil and Job. God was like, I have raised this one. In fact, I, I'm so caked in him that he can withstand you. Of course, and that's what the devil was like, no, 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 no. I, 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 he's a human being. He's not a human being. There are enough of my lines in him. I know what to touch. Skin for skin. Skin for skin. What will a man not give in exchange for his life? That was a line in. And that line is in every one of us. It's called the fear of death. All of us carry it. Satan sits there and then Job by his conversation proved that he was higher than that. So also, by reason, how did he prove? His, the last straw the, or the last... The last input, as it was, as we saw in scriptures, in the last, the last three chapters of Job, was the Lord speaking. The Lord speaking. What was he speaking? You see, it didn't seem like it was connected to his deliverance because God never spoke about this issue. God was just explaining the gap between him and Job. I just asked him, look, where were you? He was just explaining, just telling him, look, look at the distance between me and you. By the time Job agreed, he did not know that agreement brought his heart into a state that he was able to be delivered from anything that Satan could accuse him of. We can't see that connection, but that connection is in the lines. What am I saying? As unconnected as it may seem, what is being taught us, I can tell you that is where instructions for the lifestyle that overcomes Satan is hidden. Some habits you have, you have been holding on to. It's because somewhere, you have not, we have not yet paid attention enough to the precepts to gather the instruction that will lead us out. And every, we are, we are never void, we are never void of the joining. You see, that is the, that's the ministry of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is always in you, joining the precepts, com converting the precepts into instructions that you can use to birth forth lines. As pastor said, the lines are not revelation. 
the life, the lines are the expression of life that will come out whether you are talking or you are not talking. You see, precepts will come with instruction. Talk, talk, talking, talking, talking. When I say you talk, they are talking. They are speaking things to you. Lines are you being pre- pressing out a conversation. They just you may not say. Sometimes even your your sigh, your quietness. Ah, they say this this that guy's quietness is a line that's talking there. It's a line because normal people in that situation they should be shouting. They should be disturbing everybody. Look at how he's come there. Something has been installed in him. That's the word installations. Let's say amen. Amen. So this is one of the labors I believe that the Lord has brought upon us as a company. You know, one beautiful thing about precepts and lines is that it gives us the opportunity to, as it were, to a large degree, map our progress. I like the way Pastor Eli ended with that example of how how you could convert you, you, by reason of precepts come to you, precepts coming to you, you convert it to a commandment that brings forth charity. God said, okay, in this charity. And all of us have had those experiences. You could not have, you could not have come this far I can tell you, we're not saying things that are, even some of these things are not things that are going to happen. They're already at play in your life. They're already at work in your life. The Lord's already got to convert those precepts to lines. Precepts to lines. You just find yourself somewhere, you don't have the liberty to do some certain things that you could do before, around certain scenarios. Maybe you could flare up before. And now whenever you flare up, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a check. There's a check. The Lord says, don't do that. Don't do that. He can say that now because of certain precepts that are in you that he could not have said that 10 years ago. Because if he says that, you will not even hear him. You will not even hear I remember at one time in my life, it was, it was three days later after I've made a mistake. The Lord would say, you see that thing you did three days ago? I said, what? I said, what? I said, what? I said, what? Why did you say? He said, you would not have heard me. If I shouted, you would not have heard me then. I went to wait for you to calm down. So three days later, I would say, ah, that thing you did three days ago, eh? Uh, it was not okay. I would not feel so bad. I said, so I went three days. Feeling I was right. Feeling I was right. I said, hey, yes. After a while, I reached you two days. Now, these days, is the day. That day. That day. God goes, I'm leaving that place. I said, so that means somewhere I must have made some kind of progress. Can you praise the Lord for me? Hallelujah. 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 And that's all our story. That's all our story. In the seasons we are in now, the Lord is mistakenly wanting to convert precepts to lines. Why? Because lines is what you will use to fall Satan. It's lines. It's not just knowing what to say or knowing when to say it. It is having a conversation that he cannot tell. He just does not understand the way you are living your life. Because you are, living, you are, you are erasing his installations in your soul. May we do that too. May that be the blessing of our, of the, as, as Pastor Pussy said, all scriptures are given by inspiration and, for, and are profitable. The profiting actually of scripture is that lines are installed in everybody. So that... God forbid, even if there's, even if you cannot lay your hands on a, you know, this, 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 past, this is past the season of where I'm saying, ah, what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? No, they have installed something in you. Because what that installation is a, con- is a collection of like maybe seven or eight scriptures that they've put together to weave a thought. Like recently, let me, okay, let me just share this. Recently, a, 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 a thought that I've been uh, drumming. Okay, no, 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 no. It will, it will tilt us. But there are some thoughts that the Lord will use, season just to put together some, some uh, uh, many scriptures into a one thinking. And that's actually the work of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is for, when you say leading, 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 leading. Actually, leading is actually for the location of lines. Actually, it's not, the actual way say the Holy Ghost is leading, is leading, is actually leading you to, to inherit a conversation. And that conversation is couched in those lines. But I'm sorry, I'm talking about lines more, more, more than precepts. But you see, precepts are what give birth to lines. If there's no precept, there's nothing to align in you. So that places, that's why you, uh, we have some cultures in our house that the Lord has, has, has installed. You see, this culture of hearing and rehearing and continuous hearing, auto hearing. That is the secret of holding precepts. You hear, 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 until you, it's all of a sudden, it just becomes something that's in your mind. From that place in your mind, they can now fetch the instructions that you used to live. And as you live it out, you begin to judge Satan. Let's say amen. amen. Finally, okay, I've said it all. Revelation is needed to access precepts, yes. Hallelujah. Are we blessed today? I'm excited because I believe that this study is going to help all of us. You know, one thing this study is going to do is going to make us, for one, you will be able to tell where you are, how you're doing, as it were, in a measure, where you are, you know. Many, one of the blessedness of the, the, the mystery of God upon our, 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 daddy, our, our daddy, God's son, Ricardo Egoki, and our daddy uh, is to help us. Many people are launched into this, this season of life without any explanation. And because they didn't have an explanation, they just... Some of them, they assumed that it was the devil. They just, there was no map to tell them what's going on. But we are a privileged generation in that 
Because we have examples, we have people who can actually spell it out to us. We can tell, okay, okay, this is where I am now. Oh, I'm a citizen of fervent charity. Therefore, I must joke with my charity commandments. Where if you didn't know, you just think, oh, that commandment to love, hey, it's just, a one, uh, just one of those commandments. No, they are, they, are, they are calibrations in the Lord, deliberately set so that you will appreciate, or as pastor put it, so that that building will be raised. Let's say amen. Are we blessed? All right, the choir come forward, please. to the Lord who gave himself for us on the cross because of the sacrifice on the cross we have connection with the promise we have a reach with the things that are of God because he chose to lay himself down we have one response this morning to Jesus we come in worship bow in our hearts to our King who raised us from the dead who raised us from the dead set our feet on the rock to stay Jesus we exalt you Master, you arose to become Lord, our Savior, our Master, our Lord. We exalt you, Jesus. And so we believe every word that you say, every word that you speak, because you are the captain of our salvation. You are the captain of our salvation. You are the author and the finisher. God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time, with no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life. And as you speak, hundred billion galaxies are born in the vapor of your breath. The planets form. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. See your heart in every 
everything you've made Every born and star a signal fire of grace If creation sings your praises so will I God of creation, everyone together. God of creation, they're at the start before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, who spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life. A hundred billion galaxies are born In the vapor of your breath The planets form If the stars were made to worship So will I I can see fire of grace yeah if creation sings your praises so will I mm, oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. God of your promise, God of your promise, you don't speak in vain, no syllable empty your voice. For once you have spoken, oh nature and signs, all of the sound of your Just catch your breath Evolving in pursuit of what you said If it all reveals your nature, so will I Can see your heart, your heart and everything you say Every pain is kind, a canvas of your grace. If creation still amaze you, so will I. No, so will I. So. For 
what can I give in return? You've done so much for me I cannot tell it all You've done so much for me I cannot speak about it all
And the Lord said unto my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your food too. Resurrection is a story of victory, victory over death, victory over our enemies, victory over them that is. Us. Victory, victory. Do you know 
the battle A war between death and life And there on the tree The Lamb of God was crucified And it went on down to hell It took back every king He rose up as a lion And it set in on the couch lift up our hands this morning everyone let's lift up our hands and bless the name of the Lord we thank you Jesus Baranate tapashi baraba ganata tabara gatekelika tesia yane yande libara kata sabarana tesia kata sabara bakata sabarana tesa mashiba matina mama matina mama. Yeah. Now the grave I'm walking to 
resurrection, spirit of holiness. Come resurrect me by the glory of the Father. Resurrection, spirit of holiness, incorruptible seed that lives and abides forever. of your power you would change my body to your glorious body resurrection spirit of holiness come resurrect me by the glory of the father resurrection spirit of holiness incorruptible that lives and abides forever by the law of the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus you will resurrect me by the law of spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus you will resurrect me so I will utter my conversation in obedience to the perfect law of liberty so i will utter my conversation in obedience to the perfect law of liberty resurrection spirit of holiness come resurrect me by the glory To boom, see that lives and abides forever. So I will offer my conversation in obedience to the perfect law of liberty. So I will offer my conversation in obedience to the perfect law of liberty.
thanksgiving this morning Lord Jesus Father we come with gratitude in our hearts we come as a people we come as a church in the name of your son Jesus under the authority and grace of your servants our daddy daddy Emeka Eguchuku and mommy Lilian Eguchuku we come we thank you, Lord, the world over. Today has been celebrated as Easter Sunday. It did that your son rose from the dead. We want to thank you for the power of resurrection. We are here today because your son chose to die. Jesus, you chose to die on the cross. And you were raised up by your father for our sins, our justification, and our inheritance. Lord, we say thank you for Jesus, your son, our Lord. We thank you for the provisions of the person of your son. We thank you for what Jesus in his entirety means to humanity and means to us even as a people here in church. We're grateful, our Father, in the name of Jesus. We come with reverence in our hearts for your presence, for your word, for this, this ground, this stand, this platform, because of you, for your grace and your calling upon your servants, our parents, Daddy Eguchuku and Mommy Lillian, in reverence of the company of your people, the saints, the church. I ask, O oh God, Having been in, you know, instructed to minister today, that you would show me mercy. Amen. That you would help me to come under the grace, your grace upon your servant, our Father in the Lord, Pastor Emeka Eguchuku, and our mother, Pastor Mrs. Lillian Eguchuku, that you would help me to from my heart but come under this grace and yet again descend this grace and them that you would help me to serve as a young minister and yield to your body even the emphasis that you're declaring in our midst at this time in the name of Jesus Lord Jesus I ask that you would bless everyone. You would speak to every heart. That beyond and apart from my infirmities, you would take my weak vessel, my frail personality, and through it bring a blessing to your people. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I ask for utterance that you will give me utterance and wisdom and faith and where I need boldness, that you give me boldness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may please be seated. Can welcome someone to your right and to your left and tell them welcome to church. Pastor Pio, thank you. Thank you, the music team. Thank you, everyone. Amen. Good morning, everyone. 
It's good to be in church again this morning. I want to thank God for the gift of life, for the uh, mercy of God that has kept every one of us alive, strong, and you know, pursuing the very will of God for our lives, which is to lay hold on eternal life. How many of you are glad to be alive this morning? Let me see your hands up. You know, it's not our right. It's not our right, as in a right that you can enforce is by the mercies of God. Maybe some people might feel like it's their right. Some way Jesus has paid the price, but people die still that Jesus has paid the price for. People die who confess the word and do everything right. So it's by the mercies of God that we are alive. How many of you want to give thanks to God for the gift of life? We thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to begin this morning by appreciating God for our parents in the Lord and the person of our daddy, God's servant, Pastor Emeka Eguchuku, and our mommy, God's handmaiden, Mommy Lillian Eguchuku. Um, thank you, mommy. And I want to say thank you to daddy who's in far away Joss, ministering God's word to God's people for the privilege of having you, not just as uh, pastors, but as parents to us. I personally, I am grateful. I'll forever be grateful. My um, mindset, you know, as not and by God's grace will never change. You know, uh, from now till the world to come, I'm still going to be your, one of your children whom the Lord has brought under you and that Diego Chuku to serve, you know, to follow the Lord, to be raised like many other people. Mommy, thank you, Ma. I know, uh, like children, Yoruba people have this saying that the young child doesn't know how to eat uh, Echo, what do we call echo in English? Congeal pap without it smearing his hand. I know there are things that I, I, I am growing and learning to do well. You know, one of it is learning to discern you and daddy and your place in our lives, in my life, in my family, in all of our lives in this place. Every of God's grace every of God's uh, mercies that we see, you know, at work in our lives, flowing from our Lord Jesus through our big parents, we connect only through you and daddy. And for that, I am forever grateful for. Uh, I'm sure, please permit me, I feel in my heart to appreciate mommy in the absence of daddy and also appreciating daddy by, implica uh, by extension. Thank you, mommy, ma. Thank you, mommy. Thank you. I don't know how best to say it. I'm trembling. Uh, I don't know how best to say it, but I'm grateful, mommy. I'm grateful. Thank you for being my mommy. Thank you for being my daddy, daddy Eguchuku. To many of us, you bear with us. You suffer for us. Uh, you go through things that cannot be spoken for our sake. Uh, we are grateful. We are grateful. I don't feel worthy, really speaking. Maybe as I grow, I become more cautious, more careful, and more afraid. I don't feel worthy to stand here in my mind and in my heart, uh, but uh, you and Daddy insisted that I should, and I, I want to say thank you, Ma. Thank you. I'm very grateful. I appreciate you, Mommy. I appreciate you, uh, Daddy, for the grace to serve Jesus, follow Jesus, and you know, for permitting me and allowing me to serve Daddy and Mommy Oyegoke. Uh, Pastor and mommy just said, anytime daddy needs you, you must be there. You, know, you must be there. I want to appreciate you, ma. I want to appreciate you, sir. You take care of me spiritually and my home, and you take care of us physically in every regard. We are grateful. Thank you. I am very, very grateful. Thank you, mommy. Thank you, daddy. I'd like to also appreciate God for our elders in the house, our pastors that hold up the hands of our parents in the Lord. 
Uh, permit me to start from Pastor Tai of Fasson. I'm Pastor Meg Fasson in absence. Thank you very much, Pastor Sir and Ma. Thank you for coming to be a great blessing and uh, strength to our parents and to all of us here in the New and Living Way Church. Your coming has brought a great revival and strength to us, and for that we are grateful to God and our Lord Jesus, and we appreciate you, you know, great Lisa and Ma, in the name of Jesus. I'd also like to appreciate our daddy, our pastor, Pastor Kenneth Eyano Ore. Good morning, Pastor Sir, and Pastor Fumi Eyano Ore, our mommy. I want to say thank you, sir. Thank you. Just seeing you seated is a lot of encouragement and strength, and you know, you know, builds confidence. There are people you see around that you just some way, some people say you go to sleep on some matters. Thank you very much, Pastor. Thank you for being many things that time would fail to say. Thank you for your wisdom. And thank you for the disposition of Christ and God that you, you know, bring to us. I'm very, very grateful, sir. Thank you, sir. I'd also like to appreciate my brothers, my pastors that we serve our parents together. Pastor Ayo Mosei and his wife, Pastor Tulu in absence. I think you can do better. Pastor Tunji Adegoke and his wife, Pastor Yaki. Pastor Yola Oyebanjo and his wife, Pastor Taiwo. Pastor Kunle Ogunjobi and his wife, Pastor Titi. Pastor Sam Auta and his wife, Pastor Chioma. Pastor Kolade Ujo and his wife, Pastor Murenike. Pastor Mike Oluole and his wife. Pastor Nike, Pastor Ike Benjamin, our pastor. Good morning, sir. I'd like to appreciate all our Gadai pastors and their wives, from Pastor Leke, Pastor Tilash, Pastor Telema, Pastor Ike, their wives. I'd like to appreciate Pastor Jide and his wife, Pastor Pope, whose birthday was yesterday. We appreciate him, sir. Let's say amen. Uh, I'm sure you won't mind. Can we appreciate our great parents, Daddy and Mommy Oyegoke, in absence? <laughs> Let's say amen. Also, I'd like to appreciate our mommies and our elders, the deacons. <laughs> Mommy Omilano, can we put our hands together? Mommy Izuchuku, our mommy. I greet you, Ma. I want to greet the Dickens. You're well done, sirs. You're well done, mass. Praise God. Amen. Okay, uh, though I wasn't in church, I haven't been in church for some time, but I've done, okay. <laughs> it's just being here, you get scattered. Can you help me appreciate my wife? <laughs> Thank you, mommy. It's not intentional. When you get here, you just become scattered. So I, I love you, Ma. Somebody wonders, why do you add Ma? Are you always like that? I'm not always like that. But it's you know, just because I'm here, I can't be bringing my romantic vibes on the pupit. <laughs> Lest I change the atmosphere to couples retreat atmosphere. <laughs> A tip of the iceberg. Yeah. <laughs> now be in the spirit. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's turn our Bibles um, where Daddy began ministering for him. I'll just bring forth an exhortation. All scripture, Pastor Yola quoted from it earlier on. Um, Brother Silas, can you give me my phone so that I can use it to put here? Yeah. Thank you. So last week, um, like I was saying, though I haven't been in church, but most times before the Sunday ends, I've listened to you know um, service. I didn't. I don't really feel like if I've not been in church. Frankly speaking, nothing seemed new. Nothing seemed like if I've been away for some time, because I literally followed everything that is going on. Uh, to the best of my ability. 
And um, last week, Daddy began ministering, sharing some burdens um, that should lead up to season of the Spirit in three weeks' time. And at the same time, while Daddy was uh, sharing the burden, things around the breath of the Almighty, that it was also um, shedding more light, pastoral light, on the teachings that our daddy, God's servant, Reverend Kyle Deyegoke, and Mommy Helen, Reverend Mrs. Ellen Deyegoke, have been teaching the thoughts that the Lord has been bringing forth through them for almost um, 10 weeks now or more are core apostolic thoughts. And by apostolic thoughts, you can bring it, sir. By apostolic thoughts, it doesn't mean that it's something that is new outside of the scripture. Silas is my good friend. Help me thank him. You know, by being apostolic thoughts, it doesn't mean maybe there are something that is new outside of the Bible. Neither does it mean there are things that um, maybe the servant of God is bringing forth new by himself. No. There are things that the Lord, by the apostles who wrote the New Testament, have laid in scriptures. You know, from Romans down to the book of Revelations, you know, are highly apostolic thoughts. I know they say they are apostolic thoughts. Another way to put it is that they are Jesus' thoughts. Because each of those thought class apostles, five of them that wrote the New Testament thesis, are apostles of Christ and apostles of Jesus Christ. You know, it's not two persons, it's the same person, you know, but different designate of life that that same one person has. So the thoughts that they wrote in the epistles as commanded by the Lord are the thoughts of Jesus Christ. Meaning they are not just apostles who are apostles who Jesus definitely called. Every apostle, no matter the level of the apostleship, generally in the New Testament, must have been called by the Lord. And there are different indices that the Lord calls his apostles in the New Testament. For example, the apostles around the milk of the word. We saw it in the book of Acts chapter 1. We saw it in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Jesus had to appear to them physically for them to bear witness of his death, burial, and resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15. This thing is not working. You know, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The, Jesus had to appear to them. He said he appeared first to Peter, then the 12, then about, you know, 500 brethren, then James, the Lord's brother, then all the apostles. And Paul said, last of all of me. They are apostles of and around the milk. And how they became apostles is that Jesus had to physically appear to them in their orders. They were all also not in the same category. The first of those classes of apostles was Peter. The order of appearance is what showed the gravity and level of authority that they bear. So the Lord, first of all, appeared to Peter. Now, that appearance is not what happened on the day that Jesus was raised from the dead. That appearance that Jesus appeared to them, you know, uh, around his graveside, it wasn't Peter that saw him first. It was Mary. Then another account said the women saw him first. So it's possible for them to have seen the resurrected Lord, like many believers have seen the resurrected Lord, and in that appearance or that him allowing them to see him whether they see him and feel him physically or they see him in a vision, that sighting or appearance does not mean or make them apostles. If that makes apostle, the first person who should be an apostle in the New Testament will be a woman. And that should be Mary that first got to the grave and went to tell 
the other apostles, and the account says Peter and John ran, and you know Peter outran John and entered into the tomb first. So it, that's not what makes to be apostle. For them to be apostles, First Corinthians, you know, chapter fifteen, he appeared to show them his his person, you know, after having been resurrected. That appearance is to prove to them and make them witnesses of the fact that he actually died and he resurrected, meaning he must have, that appearance must have done something to them much more than what Mary experienced. Mary thought it was a gardener because her eyes were held. Eventually, when he revealed himself, he said, Rabboni, master, you understand? So what Peter saw, of Jesus, as 1 Corinthians 15 bears witness of, is different from what Mary, the other women, the two on the way to Emmaus, there are many that saw him. It's different from what they saw. Because why? He, every time at that level of the milk of the word, when he appears to those in this 1 Corinthians 15 that is bearing witness of, every time he appears, he appears to them for to make out of them you know, those who are sent ones of his resurrection. Not of the knowledge of his resurrection. Not of the, the wisdom that surrounds his resurrection. They just saw him. You understand? He said first, it was seen first of Peter, then of the twelve. Peter is among the twelve. But the same first sin of Peter means, you understand, you know, it's Peter has something more than the 12. Then, you understand, I think James, the Lord, bro, Lord's brother, then, you know, uh, you, know, you know, 500 brethren, you understand? Okay, then it was sin of James, then, then 500 brethren, then James, the Lord's brother, then all the apostles, then he said, last of all, of me. So that appearing, that Jesus appeared, made apostles out of them. So in reality, if you met them, they would, by that appearance, be able to bear witness and defend that Jesus Christ actually rose from the dead. Some things must have left Jesus into them by that appearance. It's not just that they saw him. Many of us have had encounters where we have seen Jesus, and that's part of the challenge of our present time. Because many people think just by seeing the vision of Jesus or having an encounter with Jesus, it may be so vivid, they assumed that they were apostles. They've concluded that they were apostles. And it causes confusion because a whole lot goes into the apostolic, you know, you know, you know, ordination. A whole lot has gone into, you know, in the New Testament of the making of an apostle. So Peter... For him to stand up on the day of Pentecost and talk, you understand? And 3,000 people, some days later, 5,000 people gave their lives to Christ. is because something has happened to him. Something happened to him. For Jesus to appear to 500 brethren at once, he was showing not just that, look, I didn't die. I, I, I died and I rose again. He's showing much more than that. Something must have been transferred into them upon them for them to bear witness. So they are apostles of Jesus. First Corinthians 15 verses you know, 1 and 2. You know, let me take the thoughts from there. 15 verses 1 and 2. Just you know, around the things. Can you change this? 15 verses 1 and 2. Thank you. Uh, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received. And wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory by what memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. So in this verse one and two, he's talking about the gospel that he preached. You can give it back to me. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. Now, there is a gospel that can make a soul stand in the holy place. It's the gospel of Christ. In Romans chapter 5, 
you know, can you give me Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2? Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. This being justified is present continuous. It's not new birth. He is not telling people who are born again that you are now being justified. No. They have been born again in their spirit, but there is a present continuous work of justification which is occurring in their midst. So he said, therefore, because of previous discussions from verses 1 to 4, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. In colon, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. That's Christ. Christ is what makes us stand, particularly in the holy place. You understand? When a person does faith to charity, it enables a soul to stand. Thank you. Be, you know, behold, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which stand, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. That's the holy place. So Paul is saying that the people we minister to in 1 Corinthians 15, they actually were standing. Then he went ahead in verse 2 and say, by which also, after they are standing, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. So there's a message that makes a soul to stand. And there's a message that makes a soul to be saved if one holds the words and uses them. Then verse 3. So the two messages in verse 1 and 2 is the preaching of Christ and the preaching of everlasting life. Then he said, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, verse 5, and that he was seen of Cephas, which is Peter, then of the twelve. So he is saying, I have preached Christ, I have preached salvation, but he went. He said, but I delivered unto you first of all. So the first message that any Christian will hear is what Paul is saying, the first thing he delivered. And those who preach that first message are apostles. You know, if you read down what he told him, he said, I am, la I, am, I am the least of the apostles. Now, these apostles are apostles of the beginning of the gospel. And how they became apostles is that Jesus appeared to them. He must have shown them things. We don't fully know what it is he showed them. But looking from Acts chapter 1, when Jesus gave them commandments, particularly the 12, 11 then, he gave them commandments. Things they should teach. It is obvious that it, he showed them what has happened in his spirit, amongst other things. Because in that first Corinthians chapter 15, you understand, his argument from verses 11 and 12 is that if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you there is no resurrection of the dead? So that appearance was an appearance of him showing not just his physical body alone. He's showing them a reality of what has happened in his spirit. Because they needed to bear witness of it. And in addition to that, he further also gave the 12, particularly 11, commandments of the things to teach, which later in chapter 2 was called the apostles' doctrine. So those people were apostles because of appearance and commandment of the teaching of the milk. Let's say amen. amen. Then the Lord, of course, appeared to Saul of Tarsus, if you've been in... Uh, church, you know, one year you should know that. The Lord appeared to Saul of Tarsus on the way to Emmaus in Acts chapter 9. He recounted it in Acts chapter 22 and Acts chapter 26. Jesus appeared to him and told him of two appearances. Last week, Daddy was doing, you understand, Daddy talked about the breath of the Almighty, then went back to begin to talk about how that Jesus did not preach Christ. 
our Lord did not preach Christ. He actually taught the Father. Years ago, when light was limited, you understand, you know, it, we used to think the Lord was the one that brought that level of light, that Jesus at Jordan was Christ. Then later he entered into Godhood. But as light increased, the Jesus at Jordan was an everlasting being. He is an everlasting being. At Jordan, what was the witness of God over him was of an everlasting essence. Even though Christ had been laid in him before that season of his life, because, you know, Peter, by the Spirit of God, by the Father said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. The Christ had been laid in him, but Jesus really, if you read the Gospels very well, didn't preach Christ. He made reference to Christ. Yeah, when he talked about the stone that is the foundation, build your house upon the foundation because Christ is the foundation. The house is the everlasting life. The testament is what will run it. You understand? So he mentioned it, but he didn't really preach it. He didn't really teach it. But after he left, he raised Saul of Tarsus, who was persecuting the church that was at its infant stage and knocked him down off his horse and encountered him, and in verse 16, 17, 18, and 19 of Acts chapter 26, the Lord told him that I have appeared unto you, verse 18 specifically, verse 18, can you give me verse 18? Okay, verse 17, thank you, verse 17, or oh, is it verse 16? 16, okay, thank you. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto you for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in thee which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and the Gentiles unto whom now I send you. So the Lord is saying, I have appeared. In that old scenario, that shot, you know, from verse 13 down to this place, you understand, he saw, some, he saw someone, he fell down, he called him Lord. Meaning, in what he saw, got him born again. You understand? But the Lord went ahead and said he had saw two things. He said, you have also for that seen things. And the Lord used the word things. He should have said, you have seen me. It's possible he saw Jesus. Then the Holy Ghost by Jesus helped him to see more. So he saw things. And those things that he, made, that he saw, the Lord said those things, he will become a minister and a witness of those things then he would also yet appear again unto him. So we see from, you know, that encounter, because the Lord came to Saul of Tarsus first for him to know Christ, for him to have the mastery over the doctrine of Christ. Let's say amen. amen. And much more later, the Lord also came to him to show him things of everlasting life. Now, the reason why I went through that route is because the things, the likes of Paul, James, Jude, John, Peter, the five of them that wrote the epistles, wrote down, are apostolic thoughts. They are apostolic thoughts that, and when we say apostle, from the little I have read, I've read some, you know, books, you know, before this season of my life. I've read, you know, uh, books of Baba again. He gave gifts unto men, you know, an expose on apostles, prophets, and pastors. I've listened to many messages on ministry gifts in my life. And much more, listening to our, you know, our daddy, our parents, our pastors in the community teach. The little that I have come to understand in the measure of what apostles are, to be frank, the apostolic office and spirit, not to be worshipped because it's an office, but it's a strange office and it's a strange spirit, so to speak. It's strange in many regards. We, we have and we've had probably millions of theolo theologians over the years who have done expose on this one book and they keep, not intentionally from their own point of view, eh, but frankly speaking, not being critical, not being judgmental, they keep interpreting the scriptures below the bar of what the authors really wrote. Now, as a matter of fact, I thank God for the kind of heart he's given our daddy, Daddy Diego K. Over the years, we, we would have concluded that we have arrived. How many of you have ever felt like that? 
if you've been around long enough, you, there are sometimes when the thing began to change from just faith of the son to faith of charity, you felt like, how many of you have ever felt like this thing is overstretched? If you've not, let me raise my hand. Yes, past. I just feel like this thing should end. This thing should end. Now, that feeling, that thinking, that frame is the work that a negative apostle did. Because Satan, you know, was an apostle of God. He was an apostle of God from the most holy to the holy place. He was a sent one that God sends to seraphims. Now, most of the apostolic conferences that we've had, permit me to say in the last 100, 200 years, that are obvious that we can read in church history, have all to a great degree, if I should do my little in statistics with all humility under our parents, most of them have come short, like Jane Lake prophecy said. He said, all oh, church is being weighed in the balance. Jane Lake gave a prophecy in 1600. In 1916, Charles Price forwarded the prophecy and said that prophecy of 1600, that no church is measuring up to it. Because thoughts that are written by apostolic authority really cannot be broken into without the mercy of God and apostolic calling. The best a person, an individual, a church, a generation can drag and get from scriptures are things that can make our lives good as Christians and make us lead a good life, prosperous life, and go to heaven and meet Jesus. But the thoughts that are here in scriptures are revered thoughts of Jesus. How these apostles think is how Jesus is thinking. If Jesus were to write an epistle, he would write like Paul wrote, maybe but with a greater anointing. But still within the sphere of how Paul wrote. So the things that are contained in the epistles of the apostles needs a lot of humility to approach it. You know, in our times, we feel everybody just wakes up tomorrow, I'm an apostle, I'm an apostle. I remember I went to minister somewhere, and I will not give any declare, and I met a young guy there. He just graduated from NCCF, maybe one or two years before that time. Uh, so, you know, and he has a some strong grip on that particular NCCF because he was there not too long ago, Papa, as it were. And so I am him, we're the one ministering. I may have learned to honor everybody. I just want to be blessed a minister and, you know, obey God as I can. But I couldn't just, but of course, you know, uh, apostle, you understand? Then apart from that, I just saw the air. So while he was preaching, you know, one thing that was in the air, you understand? I, you could, it was like a thought because as he was preaching, there was an atmosphere of platforms. You know, it's, it's an air around him, you understand? So he was, he was just busy blasting the body, blasting the body, blasting the body, blasting the body. And when he was through preaching, he didn't sit down to listen to anybody. He just got up and left, you understand? Of course, I enjoy, I just, you know, bore witness to things he thought a little here and there. But I was feeling also. Now, it's different if he was just a layman. It's different if he was just, you understand, another office, you understand? You know, but for him to, him to say he's an apostle, he draws some kind of attention to himself, spiritually. Chapter 11, verse 11. Uh, wherefore, because, okay, okay, verse 12. Verse 12. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. He used to be an angel of light. Now he is an angel of darkness. Correct. The angel of darkness. So he understands the sense, the very sense of a sent one. Any person that you can send to seraphims is to be feared. Any person who the Lord God can send to seraphims occur. And apostolic doctrines laid by Jesus through third class apostles, 
like Paul is the first of the third class apostles, and you add other people who are apostles and prophets like him in his days, but five of them really wrote purified thoughts of Jesus. And those things are laid in scriptures. We need mercy. We need grace. We need sovereignty. We need permission. We need election. A whole lot of things has to come on the table for those thoughts to be seen. So we have great thanks to give to God for God's servant, Reverend Kyodo Yegoke. We have, we owe heaven. It's a privilege for you to miss an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ in the days of your flesh. It is as great as that. It is as hallowed. And now somebody will say, you understand, you, you push it, they, you push it too much. It's because you don't know the extent of the damage. The extent of the blindness. Now, why am I saying this? Now, daddy, you know, while ministering last week, said he wants to make sure the things that I've taught, you know, we have to go over. Even two weeks ago when Daddy Ego K was here, you know, Daddy was saying the things that I thought that we'll stay with it and teach it. Now somebody will be like, you understand, let's just, you know, you know, gyrate and move on. Something has been said, let's move on. Can I tell you, if mercy does not visit us, the things that were said may never be understood. Meaning we need a whole lot of Trusting God for mercy in the place of prayer for our daddy, God's servant, Pastor Emeka Eguchuku, and Mommy Lillian. Now, Pastor, as the first son of Daddy Egoke and Mommy Ellen, I know when those thoughts land, Pastor understands it for himself. But to convert apostolic thoughts to pastoral food is difficult. As a matter of fact, sometimes where the devil stays, is in the transition of converting because a pastoral office has to be strong to step down on apostolic thoughts. Because apostolic thoughts come with apostolic tongue. Comes with apostolic behavior. Sometimes some things are said and covered while you are looking at the minister. Not intentionally. It's the behavior of the spirit. He says it, then the thing covers it. Then you write, sometimes you write one thing, then you write another thing that is opposite it. Then you'll be wondering, but he just said. Then he said again. You understand? Because that spirit is actually, it's a behavior of Jesus. It's a behavior. And even apostolic offices are, they are in their several classes. That 1 Corinthians 15 talked about apostles that Jesus appeared to. He showed them his resurrected essence as somebody who has been raised from the dead. But those ones, all of them, 500, James, the Lord's brother, all the apostles, Pete, Paul, they were not there in Acts chapter 1 when Jesus commanded the 11. So those 11 did not just only see his spirit raised from the dead. They have commandment of doctrine of the milk. They have something more than others. Then even when it comes to the apostleship of Christ, Paul used to say he is the first. In 1 Corinthians 3.10, he is the first. He is the one that laid the foundation. Now, him seeing it first, he has it in a way that other people didn't have it. Jesus encountered him in a way that other people were also encountered, but not in the rawness and freshness, like the, the way the Lord encountered Saul of Tarsus. Then even those five others, those four others, who wrote epistles, they are all apostles of Christ and apostles of Jesus Christ, or put another way, they are apostles of the meat of the word and of the strong meat of the word. And even them, they are also in levels. Now, in our time, we've had a lot of people who say they are apostles. Sorry that I'm going this route. It's because I want to fight something. And I want to, you know, talk something that daddy said. You find people who say they're apostles. Somebody can be an apostle of prosperity. It's possible. The Lord can raise somebody and anoint him. So that's why we shouldn't be critical. We don't know everything about Jesus. Let's say amen. amen. Eh? It's just that those things were not in the early church. There's no apostle of prosperity. There's no apostle of healing. There's no apostle of marriage. There's no apostle of, you know, you know fruit of the womb. There's, no, there's none of those kind of apostles in the epistles. They are not there in the book of Acts. 
Because church was too serious then. But the core reason for apostleship, everybody, is that those the Lord raises to be apostles are meant to teach every level of God's word as Jesus would. An apostle is meant to bring a level of reality of God's word the exact way, eventually, Jesus would have done. Meaning if we meet Peter, before Paul came to the scene, Peter should be able to tell us everything about resurrection from the dead, which is what happened to our spirit, new man. Then Peter should be able to teach us everything that is in the milk, from the new births preaching to the milk. Peter should be able to give it to us. Then you can say you've met Jesus. So when they arrested them, they said they just took notes that they have been with Jesus. Because all of those people were little, little Jesuses. Eh? Little, little Jesus. They, I was listening to that. They go, okay, was it yesterday in, in, the, in the UK or Mommy Ellen? They were all child of, of God. Child. And the Jesus they know is the child Jesus. In Acts chapter 4, when they prayed, they said that you will cause signs and wonders to be done in the name of thy holy child. Because the revelation of Jesus they had is the revelation of Jesus as a child. Not Jesus as a baby. Jesus as a child. Not Jesus in the manger. Jesus that has fully used milk to the full. Or Jesus that is as the name of the Holy Ghost. That's the reason why, you know, Ananias lied to Peter. And he said, why has that lied to the Holy Ghost? Because what they all had, Peter, James, John, they had the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus to the full. Not the infilling of the Spirit. They had the full stature of the milk that is called the name of the Holy Ghost. Matthew 28, 18, 19, 20. They had it to the full. So if you met Peter, you met Jesus. If you met John, you met Jesus. If you met Andrew, you met Jesus. All of those 12, they were Jesus's elderly children. And check the fruits of their ministry. Ch child, child. Stephen was an elderly child of the apostles' doctrine. Because those apostles, they met Jesus. They encountered Jesus. So if Jesus was to teach milk... The way Jesus would do it will not be too far from the way Peter is doing it. So if you meet Jesus teaching there and you meet Peter there, they won't be saying different things. Jesus will just say it with greater authority. The authority of the firstborn. The authority of the one that they are preaching. Peter is preaching him, but he is preaching himself. Eh? So you, no, no book can be a witness of you like yourself, as it were. You understand? So he would say it in a manner with a grace, with an anointing, with, you know, with a nature that he already has, different from how Peter would say it. But it's the same thing. So you, that's an apostle. An apostle speaks only Jesus. And can I tell you the truth? Who is Jesus? You know, it's good to ask. You know, some of these things will help put humility where it's needed. Jesus is holding, he is as a person, everything that God is. But let me talk from the point of view of thoughts, understanding, doctrine. Jesus is holding the thoughts of God. If you meet Jesus, God knows milk. Let's say amen. amen. God knows milk. God will not teach you milk, but he knows milk. He originated it. He put it in woman. He put it in a female, you know, in a, in a body. So he knows milk. And when he put it in the realm of doctrine, he knows it. He may not teach you directly, but he creates avenue for you to get it. Now, imagine if God is going to teach milk. The way God will teach it will be the exact same way Jesus will teach it. The only difference will be that Jesus, by having been made man, will not teach it the exact express way God will do it. So if they say Jesus is an apostle of God, you know what it means? It means Jesus will say the exact same thing God would say. So if, then if Jesus will preach Christ, everybody say Christ. It's Jesus that taught Paul Christ. How many of you know it's Jesus that taught Paul Christ? He didn't teach it in the days of his flesh. But on the way to Emmaus, he appeared to Paul. He on the way to Damascus, he appeared to you know, Saul of Tarsus and kept appearing. 
and taught him Christ. So what do you think Jesus would have been teaching? Imagine Jesus. Let's use the example of Abai again. That Jesus came to in our generation eh, and was teaching milk the way he taught the apostles. He taught the apostles for 40 days with resurrected body teaching milk, giving commandments. Now imagine him teaching Saul of Tarsus. Imagine Jesus showing up in the room speaking Hebrew. Argijugash, Shanguji Messinia, Isaiah, shall you? I wonder if you watch Passion of the Christ, the Hebrew version. Now imagine Jesus teaching Saul for 18 years. Appearing, backside of the desert, kept teaching him. Now, when, the, if, when Paul stands and is talking, you can say that's an apostle. Because everything he'll say is the things Jesus would say. Now, an apostle is not just an apostle because you had a vision, you had a revelation, you had an encounter, Jesus came to your room. That doesn't make you an apostle. For to be an apostle at this pedigree, there must be the sovereign will of God to separate you unto it. There must be a calling. Then there must be a walk. The Lord must hold you. A true apostle will seldom call himself an apostle. But for to make the people know. That's why you find those apostles. And it's only two of them out of five of them that wrote epistles that were bold to call themselves apostles. Peter and, and, and Paul. The rest were running away from it. They were running, they were calling themselves. That's how you know. You know how many years he has taken daddy to be able to say he's an apostle? As a matter of fact, at some point, we were like, is he truly an apostle? Yeah? Because he won't call himself. People have called and called, words have gone over almost three decades before he began to have boldness by commandment for him to say so. Not for himself, but for the sake. Now, that is being said because of the things being taught. Apostolic thoughts are scarce thoughts. Somebody might preach Jesus, preach your good prayer life. Somebody may preach, you know, you know, you know, how to be heaven conscious. Somebody may preach how to be a successful Christian, how to live holy. That doesn't make you an apostle. In our generation, we need to be weary of the tags. We need to be weary of the labels. Because the label is not what makes the contents. Particularly if we want to arrive well. So the thoughts, I was giving an example. Now imagine Jesus preaching Christ. And God is the one who sent him. The first apostle of Christ is Jesus. So how do you define an apostle? The things Jesus will say will be the exact same thing God will say. That's an apostle. Now, him as an apostle of the Father, which is what he preached in the whole of the gospel. The book of John is full of Father, 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 my Father and I, my, my, I am in my Father, he is in me. Everything he did, he was an apostle of everlasting life. He didn't call himself an apostle, but he is. He said, as my Father have sent me, he is an apostle of the Father. So everything he will say is the exact same things God will say. The father would say, that's an apostle. Now, I'm saying all of that for to say this. The thoughts that the Lord is, you know, hatching, bit by bit. There are three, four classes of apostles. The Lord Jesus told Kenneth Hagin in the book, he gave gifts unto men. There's apostles. Who is the apostle? The lamb. Jesus, our Lord, the first class apostle. He thought Hagin. Then the second class apostles, 12 apostles of the lamb that were with him from Jordan till he went up on Mount Olives to heaven. Then there is third class apostle called revelational apostle. They are the ones who laid the foundation of Christian doctrine for all generations. Then there is fourth class apostle. Those who see that foundation. Now it's difficult to see fourth class apostles. Now I know the Lord, as he had said through his prophets, he understand his servants would multiply them all over the world in these last days. But it has not yet happened. So the thoughts that we are being taught, Pastor Sir, are hallowed holy thoughts, which requires a lot of faithfulness on our part to catch up with. Apostolic thought is like saying, come and think like God thinks. Not by reading the Bible, 
By reading the Bible, if it happens by reading the Bible, we should have all been there. They have to make certain things, certain graces. You know, we have to gather. A whole lot of things have to be in place for some of those thoughts to drop. Now, when they drop, if our attitude of commitment is lackadaisical, I can assure you we won't hold it. We won't hold it. Meaning we have to put in extra might. The man who the Lord is put that grace on, that they go, okay, He's been bearing that grace for decades. Eh? And he stands and those things just comes out. He just says them. Now, me and you will need extra commitment too. We can't do younger. And we just come in, you know, strolling and stroll out and think we will hold it for all of what it is. Now, one thing about those kind of thoughts that the Lord is on on hurting from the scriptures of the apostles and of the prophets is if you miss a season of it being delivered, you may not catch up in the next season. If one season consistently goes by and you didn't understand everything that was said, you may need to trust God to, you understand, you know, help you to catch up if you want to be in the loop of what the Lord is saying per time. So the first thing in my heart is we need to trust God. Now, why is that important? If we don't have that attitude, we will frustrate the grace of God on our pastor. As a young minister under our parents and pastors, I have found when people, don't, when people are not hungry, when people don't want too much, the minister is frustrated. You can even make, bring the minister to the point wherein he may be doubting God's grace on him. The only way God can be convincing that minister is that maybe when that minister goes somewhere else, something happens. Eh? I heard that the saying last week, that New and Living Way Church is not a church for bread and butter. You know, those are, as we are growing, we will be having our unique warfares. Peculiar warfares that comes with growth. Remember the days of Vokes, rain, sun, trekking. How many of you, were, let me see your hands if you were in that season. Let me see your hand. Raise your hand very well. Don't be shy. It doesn't mean you have missed everlasting life if you are not there. <laughs> now, you need to see that. See people coming to church, trekking. You see Unilag students who almost kill a Costa. Maybe Costa is meant to carry 30. You carry 100. The Costa will be dragging it, but people will come. People, I remember everybody was hit. Services were fire. Some of you go to YouTube and go and listen to some messages that he taught. Then, I'm saying this, while well, I listen to the message, I listen as a, as a son of pastor. And I came with a burden. That if we are not hungry enough, we will not connect the progressive change of grace upon our daddy. We, and if we don't do it, we as a church may be stuck somewhere. The biggest desire in the heart of that, the Eguchuku, and I know of Mommy Lillian, is that we as a church should keep making continual evolving in truth as the Lord is turning the pages of the thoughts of God. Because we can become complacent. If you were here in church last week, you will hear Pastor said, Woe unto them who are at ease in Zion. Pastor said, God told, the Lord told him that you can do well in the season of Christ and may not do well in the season of everlasting life. And there are things that evil spirits raises. As we are growing like this, they will be raising things. They can raise cars. Everybody is buying cars. Everybody is buying. And that might just be the over. So we just come to church. Not having a desire strong enough like one church that is in one corner somewhere and things are hard. And everybody is coming, no money for transportation going back, no money for this. They didn't eat before they come to church, but they have just come to hear Christ. They have come to hear salvation. And you see their hunger, their passion. But we that want the same thing, God forbid, say God forbid. Who we'll just stroll in. Strolling, even while the service is going on, we understand how it's to go. Sometimes we are outside and we do all kinds of things. The Lord is watching us. Can I tell you, the Lord won't wait for any church. It is those who keep pace with him, he will keep pace with. He said, draw nigh unto me, I will draw nigh unto you. 
We don't want to be said to be, you understand that, oh, we did dwell in Christ. We did dwell at the beginning of everlasting life, but we did not do well. God forbid. But for God to forbid, we have to trust God. We have, otherwise, we may frustrate our pastor. When daddy wants to preach, you understand? No longer. We just expect small admonition. Yeah, you understand? Uh, you understand? And at the end of the day, we just, because why? We as a church, by God's grace, and I say this with all sense of humility, we have come to a place, even though we are journeying in spiritual things, that natural things are answering to us. Whether you believe it or not, it's so. Eh? It's a level of growth. Not, there are certain estates, certain graces, anointings, lands that have been possessed. Some people just came two years ago, three years ago. They came from a very, very rough past, and grace has transformed their lives. It's something that is resting on the walk. But it is resting on the walk, not so that we will not be complacent. Otherwise, we just discover after sometimes, God forbid, everybody is looking at the car, everybody is looking at your house, everybody is looking at your marriage. That church, when you go there, you marry quickly. God forbid. I'm not saying you take long to marry, but that will not be our identity. It will not be our, and it begins with you. It begins with you. When that is teaching, don't just stay there. I was listening to the message at some point. I was almost angry, to be frank. You understand? And daddy will say, don't sleep on me. Don't sleep on me. Because daddy has his own manner of ministry. It's different from how daddy ego came ministers. And one thing I have learned, I learned it in different ways. One way, amongst many, is interpreting tongues. When I'm with that, the Lord taught me over time with grace. There is how the Spirit of God manifests through that, the Eguchuku. So in interpreting tongues, when he's ministering, I, there is a way the Spirit of God helps me to yield. Even his language in the Spirit. When Pastor Thompson is ministering, he's another flow. When that, the is ministering, he's another flow. He's different. So also it is in the spirit. When daddy is ministering, you understand that they go, okay, Satan fights people. But daddy has his own style of warring. Apostolic might. He can make us laugh for two hours just to deliver a 20 minutes message. Eh? But daddy Egochuku has his own manner. And we have to trust God to descend that manner. Otherwise, Paul said, I did not frustrate the grace of God. An individual can frustrate the grace of God on his life. A wife can frustrate the grace of God on her husband. A church can frustrate the grace of God on a, on a pastor. Because the pastor labors, labors, prays, prays, waits on God. When he gets to the people, Satan has won. Satan has put different desires, different passions, different weights, different things of concern. He, he's not saying go and seek another thing. You don't listen to another emphasis. It's this emphasis. But the passion is not there. Some of you check yourself while you were in school. Check yourself. The same hunger. You, the hunger you had then is not what you have now. Am I saying the truth? It's not the hunger you had then you have now. Then you can use your school fees to, to pay for, cha, for room and be trusting God for money for food. You use it to sow just to have space to come for convention. Now you earn in hundreds of thousands and yet you are not in meeting. You have all the convenience. The thing is not touching you. And you want to inherit everlasting life. So it's good to know that we have to trust God. We have to trust God. We have to trust God. I listened to the message and what I had was burden. 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 That we have to trust God not to, not to frustrate daddy. Not to frustrate mommy. The Lord had shown mercy to Daddy Eguchuku under our parents in the Lord. That, you understand, in a new and living way, not for anything, models unconsciously. Not that Eguchuku is not trying. Unconsciously models things from this order of service to the way things are done. It's a grace on Daddy and Mommy Egoke that the, is birthing things. But the Lord wants to push the frontier of this truth in our midst to the end. So we need to trust God. Our hunger level. It shows in when we come to church. It shows in how we listen to message. You know sometimes when, you, when sheep disconnect from the shepherd, the shepherd knows. Because the connection is not just being around, it's hearts. Sheep are connected to shepherd by hearts. 
And sometimes when a shepherd is sensing disconnection, he begins to be frustrated. Eh? Disconnection as in is because the real thing that binds a shepherd and sheep is pasture. It's not human relationship. You can be in his house and you, you don't have the relationship. It's pasture. It's pasture. So we need to trust God. We need to repent where we need to repent. That when we come to church, we should not of us who have found grace in a measure to follow daddy. Eh? You just discover it's continual hunger. You can't keep up being around daddy or ego okay if you are not hungry. The thing will shake you off. There is something around him. It will shake you off. And hunger is normally tampered with when hope is being tilted. When hope is tilting, hunger will be affected. If what you are looking for is not the thing, you just discover is the, the hunger will be leaking small, small. And Satan is evil. You know, it's like the roaring lion. Lions, cats. All the, those cats and snakes, they lie in wait. They come small, then they wait. You may not move again for three months. Then you will come small, then you wait. All he wants to do is to leak out something. Is to take something. Then you will just be, I remember when I was in school. God forbid. If your hunger yesterday is more than your hunger today, you need to start fasting. That your hunger for the things of the Spirit... Your passion for word. Your love for your pastor because of word. Eh, you know, we are all becoming fine under our parents. But that shouldn't be the thing binding you. It should be word. 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 If word is not driving you, we need to begin to start praying. Because daddy as an angel of the Lord under Jesus, under daddy and mommy Oyegoke, Part of what will make even our daddy and mommy Lillian prosper in this thing is us. They told the church that because you don't do this and this, say we will come and remove your church or your candlestick. We will take them out of that place, that ground of everlasting life. Because certain things were not being done. So we need to trust God. No matter the prosperity that the Lord is bringing, to cushion us so that we will pursue more life. We should not allow it to distract us. Can I tell you? We should still have ability to trek to church. If it is not there. If it is not there. Or we just okay, well, we become a church. You understand? That is only of millionaires. Is that who we are? New Living Way has a mandate to the world. We have not started. What did I say? We have not started. So would we now be lackadaisical? You know, we have arrived, two church, two car park, two ch children department. God forbid. What we want is life. A people who are on life fire, 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 who just want to hear what? As pastor is preaching, they are determined. You understand? They are, they are you know, going back and they are listening and having, and having conviction and breaking down in tears. Because I go to minister in some other places. Eh? God has helped us, so, but we need to trust God to push more. I felt while I was listening, we as a church, we need to come together to pull things from Jesus through pastor. To do what? Can I take in of blessed memory? Baba said, he said one time, he noticed he would go to some churches. He will fast. He will pray. Fast, pray, and when he goes there, everything will be dry. He says some, some pupils are dry. If you light the matches, it will, it will burn. Then he will go to some place. He's not even fasting. He's not even well prepared. And all of a sudden, the move of the Spirit. He said sometimes you would have seven gifts of the Spirit. Oh, that's almost the whole nine gifts. In one service. He said the thing kept occurring. So he will go to the other place, nothing will happen. The place you feel like this is the place. Then he goes to the other place, something is happening. So he, went, he said he went to the Lord, fasting and praying. Why? The Lord told him, the problem is not you, it's the people. He said, why you find my spirit moving more there? It's because the people want more of me. Those people want other things. So I relate with them according to what they want. Like the example you gave, Daddy was saying yesterday. He went to a church. He said, is it uh, going deeper or something? Launch into the deep. And he launched into the deep, and they told him, that's not the deep. Money, child, house, that's the deep. 
But that will never, it's not, but, and it will never be our own testimony. Imagine us, as the Lord is blessing us, the Lord is prospering us, we are growing in number, and the Lord is opening more, more churches for the sake of reaching people, and we are still raw. I used to wonder, how has Mommy Ellen and Daddy Yegoke continued? Sustained. Daddy Yegoke has been a Christian while he was, before 17 years. 17 he was, in, went into the wilderness. Daddy is going to be 60 in two years' time. He's 58 this year. Check the hunger. May we pursue the right things. Check the hunger. It's, sometimes you think Daddy just likes preaching. No. He comes because he knows there is something Jesus will give. So he's tired he see himself, he's bodily tired. But you see him, he will come, sometimes he will just slightly doze off, then he will get up and preach for three hours because he knows that the Lord wants to say something. You don't know when the Lord will send that angel. You don't know when that door will open. That's the heritage we are being born into. Not you that choose meeting to attend. You choose the meeting to attend. Who is preaching today? It's Pastor, I don't know. I, I discovered I have some backlog I need to finish. That way you want to lay hold on the everlasting life. The passion is below the bar of everlasting life. So we need to trust God. We need to put our leg on the accelerator of desire. Trusting God to put pressure on pastor to press things out. Some of us, you know, sorry to say this. Satan at times is evil. Satan can fight, you know, Nicoletian Smith, you know, something that has to do with the lady. Satan can fight laymen just to fight the pupit. Can I tell you this? Let me say this. As a child of daddy, I'm mommy ego chuku. When daddy is preaching, it's not a time to sleep. I understand if it's okay, maybe once, why, twice, you're seated and you're sleeping. It's not good. When daddy is preaching, you know, evil spirits come. In January, daddy came from Poland and an angel came. He said he has provisions, plenty of provisions. If we don't put pressure on heaven, put pressure of hunger, put pressure of desire, which shows in our heart disposition in the spirit for God to release it, we may not get it. I didn't say daddy will not get it. We may not get it. It will affect our corporate evolving, which is not good. So we need to trust God. We need to trust God to put pressure. Season of the Spirit is coming much more than after season of the Spirit. We need to trust. We need to trust God. We must not take a mold lower than hunger. If wearing fine clothes distracts you on Sunday, wear on fine clothes. Because what we want is life and life everlasting. We don't come here and look at our cars. We don't come here and look at our shoes. We don't come here and look at our natural estates. Even though God is adding to us, what we are looking for is life. 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 It's life, life, life. And God has blessed us. He has put apostles over us. Daddy and mommy are apostles. We are meant, to, apostolic thoughts are meant to be converted. There's a lot resting on Daddy Eguchuku. A lot. I used to, I remember, almost all Daddy's thoughts get converted. Apostolic thoughts get converted in Sunday school. Get converted. He's still there, but it should hide him. It depends on our hunger. We will not take another mold. Yeah. Our hunger will be just for life. Yeah. Sisters will be known just for life. Yeah. I am not against some of the things I have spoken to. Of course you know. But I'm just trying to say they must not replace life. If they do, Satan has cheated us. And can I tell you, Satan is after us. Believe it or not. Oh. What did I say? Touch yourself. Say, Satan is after me. It's not cause. It's the truth. And being after us doesn't mean he wants to kill. Being after us, he wants to stop that flow. I see the passion of mommy when mommy is praying. 
for Daddy Eguchuku. When Mommy Lillian is praying for Daddy, you know, I sit there in Daddy's ministry. I feel the passion. You speak to Daddy, you say he was all up all night preparing for Sunday service. Then we were just strolling casually. And strolling without hunger. And strolling not being prepared. We, we may frustrate grace, but we won't. Can you hold someone? I want us to pray that God would adjust our hearts. God would adjust our hearts. Particularly with regards to how we... I want us to trust God. First of all, let's ask the Lord, adjust my heart. This is a revelational church. My daddy, our daddy, under daddy Egoke and mommy, mommy Ellen, daddy and mommy Eguchuku, they are ministers of the highlights of God. We will not desire below it. Wale Maneto. Yalamanata Sabalani, that you will touch our hearts, you tune our hearts. We want the heart of one who cries for righteousness, who travails for salvation. Wale Mosha, Wale Mambola, Wale Manelo, Fule Menetete, Tengrene, Tengrene, Tengrene. Have mercy. Have mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. You know one thing the adversary does. Thank you, sirs and mass. One thing Satan does. As work grows, Satan evolves in strategy. Satan doesn't stay one place. He changes in how to catch every work. Daddy was talking about the seven churches. Check them. Satan came to them in different ways. In different, there may be a church that probably is hearing this truth that all they are, they are, I know some people, hardship. They will come for meeting, they will be looking for money for transportation. And you see their hunger. Me, I always look at those kind of people. Those are my inspiration. So I don't get comfortable driving car every time, coming for meeting. God, no, they judge like that. God, no, they judge like that. Okay, I have suffered. Thank you. It's what he's saying now and what I am doing with what he's saying. I don't want to get so comfortable, you understand? Okay, you know, we're going there, we're going here. What I want is everlasting life. If it would take me to go back to sit down at the back there to get it, I want to get it. I don't have two lives. And I don't want to miss this one opportunity. So wealth, as the Lord is bringing it, shouldn't define us. You know how to put it where it belongs. Whatever it is, because I'm saying it because I know the Lord is bringing things, and the Lord will bring things. But we have to now trust God to be like Daddy Eguchuku, Mommy Ellen, my Mommy Lillian, Daddy and Mommy Egoke. The things God brings around them doesn't define them. Being a pastor, oh, the pastor, you know, there's a way we dress, there's a way we now do this. Before, you know, Satan is evil. Some people might be coming, don't knowing what, to, what, what is being pursued. Might be like this is the code of conduct. This is how these people do this. There is no how. If you have, if you are in poverty, you belong to us. So it's a church of rich people. No, it's not also a church of poor people. That they said two weeks ago. He said he is not rich. He is not poor. In New and Living Way, we are neither rich nor poor. All we want is the riches of Christ and the riches of salvation. So as we are coming, we need to trust God. Sorry to say, I find this thing. We need to trust God to help us to descend that the Eguchuku again. A minister you don't descend, you may not get too much from. A minister you don't descend. You know, sorry, everybody, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. You know, that it doesn't sound, you know, the way, because there are levels of graces. Everybody say there are levels of graces. The grace upon that the Eguchuku 
is the grace of a pastor, a teacher, that the Yugoke has said before, a prophet and a mighty father. That it may not sound like some of us who have sweet mouths. And there's nothing wrong with the sweet mouths. Eh? But it's a level. Children have mouths than their parents. Eh? You understand? But the truth is that, you know, we may be tempted. We may be tempted. And that temptation shows in a heart disconnection, in seeking pasture. So we see pastor as somebody, you come, he will pray for you for this, he will pray for you for this. But when it comes to the word, your heart shifts. There is a connection of pressure. You should put pressure. They say, when you look at pastor, when he's preaching, you are, you are expecting something from Jesus. And Jesus knows you want something from him. And Jesus will put that weight. Imagine all of us putting a weight on Jesus. Jesus puts it on pastor. But if we come and, you know, we just feel like, no, when I go to EGFM, are we here? Of course. When I go for this meeting, are we here? Of course. When you come to church, there is plenty of provision. But we need to trust God not to allow the devil. So the way daddy will talk, daddy will talk small, small. Will, daddy has a way and manner. And some of us, we are used to it. But we... We may not be seen. You know, we, 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 when we lead prayer, we talk about that. We go, okay, how people should descend daddy. You know, that same thing is true for every minister. We need to descend daddy, ego chuku. Otherwise, daddy will go out. People will be blessed. He will come here and we'll be getting trickles. God forbid. Daddy went to Austria recently. I spoke with the pastor. He called me for something. He wanted something from New and Living Way. I said, I'll talk to Daddy. He now told me. He said, Pastor Emeka came to our church. See testimonies. He was, we were too blessed. That man is loaded. You know, he was saying it. You understand? You know, he said a prophet is without honor, but in his own house. We have to trust God. Why me? I was listening to Daddy. I saw that there is, permit me to say it this way now. There is a cloud mightily gathered, it just needs to rain. The instrumentality for the rain is our hunger and our discernment. Our discernment. How do we see daddy? How do we see daddy? Daddy is a house of food. I remember years ago, while I was handling midweek service in Vokes, I did it for almost two years. So normally we'll pray we're leading prayers. And as we're leading prayers, I just saw a vision, spiritual vision. I saw pastor open his mouth and leaves. We're coming out. That's pasture. What makes a pastor pastor is pasture. But the people must be wanting to eat. And Satan can fight. So another thing I want to say, let's trust God for our hope. Our hope. What are we looking for? As every work grows... Satan puts stumbling block. What are we looking for? We're looking for appearance. We're looking for salvation. We're looking for crown. We're looking for, those are not esoteric. If we begin to feel like they are esoteric, it's because our hope is being tampered with. What did I say? If we begin to feel a crown, promise, it's because somewhere, it may not be obvious. It's like a plane that has moved off its, you understand? It won't show immediately. After some time, discover you've gone totally way off. So we have to trust God. All of us, what we are looking for is life. Pastor, HOD, departmental member, you understand? Any department, what we are looking for is life. And if we are looking for life, it will affect the atmosphere. It will affect breath. It will cause breath to come. It will cause breaths to come. It will cause the Lord to make provisions abound. Let's say amen. amen. So back to where I started from. Sorry, I went through that route. I just spoke out of, you know, a burden in my heart, you know, while I listened to the message. So I was saying when, when I started, the apostolic thoughts are not easily cracked thoughts. We need to be praying. I feel we should intensify our prayers for daddy. Converting these thoughts to, for example, promise. You know, we can, like you were saying in Sunday school, we can arrange it this way it is arranged. 
But over the years, I've seen there is a pastoral angle. There's a pastoral, you know, in a way of laying those same. For example, objective and subjective leading came from Daddy Higuchuku. What Daddy Ego can teach is as an apostle, just teach wilderness. The Spirit of God will drive you into the wilderness. But pastoral grace came to the point, it broke it down. That in leading, there are leadings for babies. There are leadings for sons. I won't forget when that thought broke. Pastor taught it as a series in Ajegule. Because Daddy Ego can travel to Niger for missions work. I've never heard it. There is, it's not anywhere in any book. But through the grace of God on Jesus, that flows through Daddy and Mama Ego, okay, that thing came on Pastor. And it was used to pasture us. So we can tell today now it's everywhere. It's because, you understand, it was pastored. Apostolic thoughts need to be pastored. And Satan fights between those two wings. To make sure that the thoughts, because when the thoughts are pastored, the sheep is fed. It doesn't mean the sheep can't get it. The sheep can get it from the apostolic directly. But in church, it needs to be pastored. It needs to be, a pastor is like a ruminant animal that shews the cord. He will eat it one, then he will bring it out and give it to the, again. So we need to trust God that the Lord would come upon our daddy greatly. The Lord will come upon our mommy greatly. That, you understand, in these seasons and seasons to come, you know, as apostolic thoughts are landing, eh, they are being converted. They are being converted. In families, we should pray. In our fellowships, we should pray that these thoughts, as these thoughts, particularly when you're hearing them, sacrifice, atonement, you think it's not for you? You think it's not for you? Without it, you won't enter. Without it, we won't become... I sometimes, if God doesn't show mercy, it might look like there's no connection between the thoughts. And where we are, that's where we need a pastor. Who will take it, break it down, and grind it, and present it in a format that you will eat it. You'll be like, is this the same thing? It is. But now you can digest it. Let's say amen. amen. Hallelujah. I'm almost true. My intention is just to exhort us. Can you give me that place in Timothy? All scripture. I round up with the thoughts. <clears throat> so Daddy began telling us from that last week about the issue of God's breath. Let's say amen. amen. He said all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. But the word there is all scripture. We are daddy's children. That the Yoko has taught there are two levels to scripture. There is holy scriptures. Everybody say holy scriptures. That's Second Timothy 3, verse 15. And that from a child, thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation, through faith that is in Christ. Now, it doesn't mean that maybe there are other books outside of this. No, that's not what it's saying. Paul, by the Spirit of God, is the same person that said it, and is very deliberate and calculated. There are scriptures that are holy. They call them holy scriptures because they, they, they are scriptures when, if when understood, seen, and applied, would make a person holy. The end of those scriptures in the life of the recipient is that it will work out a work of holiness in that person. And they talked about the prophets. They called them holy prophets. So daddy will talk about two kinds of prophets in the Old Testament. Prophets who prophesied the, 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 the things of Christ in a figure. First Peter chapter 1, verse 10. First Peter chapter 1, and I'd like us to read together. Then we'll pray. I also came to lead prayers. First Peter chapter 1, verse 10. Can 
We read together. Yeah. So from verse 9, receiving the end of your faith, which is the salvation of your soul, the goal of your faith. He's talking to a people who have been established in faith. And he's saying, receiving the end or the reason for your faith. The reason why we were taught faith is so that we will come into salvation. Then in verse 10, he now said, of which salvation, in now explaining the salvation, the prophets have prophesied. The prophets have inquired and searched diligently. Who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you? Verse 11. Searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify. Now, when they were searching, there was already something in them. When they were searching what? There was already something in them. What was in them? The spirit of Christ. Now, by the spirit of Christ, he's not talking about their human spirit. Because all Old Testament prophets, like everybody under, until Jesus came, they were dead in their spirit. So he's not talking about their human spirit. Neither was he referring to the person of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was not in them. But the activity of the spirit of doctrine, or call it breath, was in them. So what made these prophets positioned for to begin to search and inquire for salvation is because they had a breath in them. So it is a breath that made them holy prophets. They are being called holy. It's not because of their spirit. No. Neither is it limited to how they live with their body. Of course, they are a person who is holy inside would reflect in their conversation outward. They are being called holy prophets. It's because of the work of holiness that the Lord did in them. True bread. Everybody say bread. Bread. Another word for bread could be nefesh. Or rather, neshama, because that's the word in the, in the, in the Old Testament. There is air, nefesh, ruach, nefesh, which is soul. Ruach is wind. Neshama is breath. So that thing that is in them is a breath. It's some form of spirit. It is that breath that worked in them what they eventually wrote as scriptures that the likes of Peter in first Peter chapter 3 verses 2 or 3 he called them holy prophets eh? in the book of Revelation they call them holy prophets Paul in Ephesians called them holy prophets you find it in Peter's epistle he called them holy prophets so what made holy was a bread everybody say bread there is the bread of Christ or there is the spirit, another word you can call it, of Christ. That spirit of Christ is a spirit. I remember last week Daddy was talking, you understand, when he was talking about, you understand, creation, Daddy Eguchuku, and formation. Yeah? There is the spirit of Christ is a spirit or the breath that reveals the materiality from whence Christ is, you know, brought forth and raised in the soul of a person. For Adam, Adam had a very, very good breath of the Almighty. Though not the full, but he had it. When he said, and God breathed into his nostrils, the breath of life, and he became a living soul. Meaning the breath of things everlasting because the almighty is the father yeah? he had the bread of the father now God didn't bother putting bread of you know Christ in Adam because he was an everlasting being the work of it is buried inside of him 
But it's good to know that there are two breaths. God breathes breath. Every time God breathes, he breathes life. That they could say he doesn't breathe oxygen. Even angels don't use oxygen. It shows you how limited we are. When angels come here, imagine angels coming wearing nose mask or wearing oxygen because of their own angelic oxygen because he doesn't want to die. They don't need it. So what God breathes really is life. And he can give two kinds of bread. The bread that is Christ is the bread that can bring forth the formation of Christ in our soul. And that bread, when the Lord raised Paul, Paul had that bread. You can call it spirit. Paul carried it everywhere. It is out of it he was preaching. It is out of it in Old Testament times. Old Testament prophets wrote. So when you are reading Isaiah, like that Diego said, all those prophets in the holy place, outer court holy place, Isaiah, Zechariah, Obadiah, their name sounds like Seraphim, Micah, you understand? Different from the ones in the most holy, Daniel, Ezekiel, their own name ends with E-L, which is as a result of their breath. And if you check their writings, it correlates with the breath they carry. So if that is saying the breath of the Almighty, because it is everything begins with the breath. Life begins with the breath. So when God wants to give Christ, he encountered Saul of Tarsus. When they say breath, don't, don't be limited to oxygen. Breath is, is spirit out of which life can come out. So what Jesus was doing to Paul, he was breathing on him. He was, and you can speak breath. Eh? What did I say? Because all scripture is given by the inspiration, breath of God. And it's profitable for doctrine. So that means the scripture that comes can profit in speaking, when you speak doctrine. So Christ's breath, when God puts it in a minister, the minister can speak it. Out in that minister, every time that minister is palpitating, is living, is actually churning out bread. It will show, first of all, in precepts. It will show in lines. It will show in painting doctrine that people would live. But inside of the minister, it is bread. It's like it's oxygen gas for living. When they say the, the just shall live by faith. This body lives with oxygen, gives out carbon dioxide. The soul lives with bread. The soul lives with inspiration. Where you find inspiration of Christ, for example, abound. Utterance is easy. The minister just stands. Maybe while worship is going on, or while he is seated, like you heard that they go, okay. It was while Leke was leading prayers. You understand? The thing just came. You just see that the, it's breath. So breath can be an allocation over a church. Breath can be an allocation over a family. You just discover everybody that is breathing in that breath begins to understand. Because the end product, the, the kick-starting door of breath is that it begins to bring understanding. When God opens breath, over, it's like when you want to kill a mosquito. What do you introduce? Bad breath. It's a breath that is against them. So you share the breath and lock the door and they die. But when God wants to make us live, he brings bread. Because we've already taken in another bread. All of us are carrying bad bread. Have you stayed around somebody with bad bread? Somebody said they are the ones that easily set to quarrel. That two people are quarreling. They say, you understand? You know, you know uh, uh, <laughs> which name will I call now? Kampala. Kampala and Kazoto are quarreling. And Kamp Kampala, it's okay. No, no, leave him. Leave him, come out. Kazoto, take it easy. No, everybody, they've been trying to hold them. Just bring the guy with bread. He just goes to Kampala. He do. Your own too much. You just hear him say, now because you talk, oh, bros. So what's that to the quarrel? Breads. 
Somebody also said, people that have those kind of breasts, they are the ones that have secrets the most. They will just say, come, I won't tell you for your ear. I won't tell you for your ear. He said, no, send me a test message. <laughs> That's on a light note. Let's say amen. So there is Christ's breath. When Christ's breath is at work, like we in our, in our community, we have, Christ's breath is everywhere. It's the oxygen we breathe. Eh? Some, of, some of us, they say, come and teach Christ. Now, every day for the next six months, you won't say two things. You would, there's new breath. You, every, because why? The breath is so much. It's everywhere. But the Lord can so open the breath of things almighty. God put it in Adam's nostril. And Adam woke up with 50% everlasting life in his soul. God can bring it over us. And it becomes an economy. Everybody just easily slips into it. You are frying plantain, you slip into it. You are driving, you slip into it. Eh? Meaning everybody is just breathing in everlasting life. It is a breath that is at work in the life of our daddy. And the reason why God is supplying that bread is so that a community of people all over the world, in the churches, eventually all the churches should begin to breach that bread. Can I tell you something? In heaven, <laughs> the predominant bread is Christ and Almighty. Christ, outer court, holy place, Almighty. That's the predominant bread. Any other bread, they brought it from earth. You know, people go to, to heaven with their own bread, their own oxygen tank. Die, 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 die. It's, an, it's a bread. And you see the guy is in heaven. <laughs> Even angels wonder what's happening to him. Say, so is the bread, the bread somewhere in Africa. <laughs> Wicked bread. And you see another one, motivation. And he sees, you understand? Say, if you don't have a bishop, you become a bookshop. <laughs> it's a bread. It's wicked bread. You see, evil spirits are carriers of evil bread. They just take people, give them nose mask, and now they do it is true preaching. So when you listen to wrong preaching, be careful because he said, the just shall live by faith. What's living? His soul. You know, if they, if they stop your physical breath, you die. Because we live physically, our body, by oxygen. But the soul lives by faith because faith is a breath. It's a mighty breath that the Lord intends that a soul should be breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. Until the soul is fully made and fully becomes a new man. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ah, San so send, send you, send. Send is you sin, send you son, sin, zan, zen. Send you son, send you send. Send you new breath. I'm sending new okay. breath. I'm sending new breath. I'm sending ch changing breath. Changing breath. Changing atmosphere. Changing environment. For environments and atmospheres are products of breath. They produce breath. They produce sustenance. I'm changing your breath. I'm changing your breath. I'm changing your breath even for a new location in the spirit. For there is a constitution you need to be breathing even at this time. Even at this time as an assembly. Even at this time as even individuals. A new breath. A new breath. New breath. New mercy. New breath. New season. New breath. For the mercies and allocations of life are calibrated in breaths. In breaths. In breaths. In breaths. In sustenances. For there is that which has sustained you till now. 
but according even according to the program of salvation that is in the heart of the Father. He has commissioned a new breath over you. He has commissioned a new breath over you. He's commissioned a new breath and with this new breath he's changing even your breathing apparatus of your soul. I'm changing the breathing apparatus of your soul. I want you to be able to breathe under this atmosphere. For many of you have breathed well under Christ. You have breathed well under Christ. You have breathed. Your lungs have been expanded even to take in Christ. Inspirations of Christ and live out Christ. But I'm seeing suffocation. I'm beginning to see suffocation. I'm beginning to see suffocation. There's suffocation even in the height of everlasting life. For the everlasting life is high mountain. It's high mountain. It's a high mountain where breath is scarce. Where this kind of breath is scarce. So I want to change your apparatus. You need to breathe here also. You need to breathe here also. Receive the instructions. Receive the movement of the spirit for to change your breath. As I change your breath, I change your instruments of breathing. I change your instruments of inspiration. Even by the influx of the message everlasting. So you will breathe well. I say you will breathe well here. You will also breathe well here. You will also breathe well here. You receive inspiration here. It will translate to a lifestyle here. And you will also prosper here. But it's tied to breath. It is tied to breath. It is tied to breath. For commandments in this season. And for the changing of instruments for breathing. I want you to breathe well. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Take in inspiration. Excel that bad breath. And live and prosper. Even under this new, 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 new. New, 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 new breath, new breath, new breath, new breath, new lease of life, says the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Can we lift our hands this afternoon and thank the Lord for his word? I want us to pray. Just maybe two or three prayer points, then I'm good by God's grace. You know, one thing about bread, naturally speaking, is that bread is for living. He said for us, the body, that's James chapter 2. Can you give me James chapter 2? James chapter 2. For as the body without the spirit, if you check the word spirit there, is breath, is dead, so is faith, because his body is talking about. So as the body without the spirit is dead. So when somebody gives up the ghost, it's because the breath ceased. So also, spiritual breath is not knowledge. Because somebody may be asking, we've been hearing everlasting life for how many years? So why, why are we now receiving new breath? At the level, somebody who is learning about oxygen, is it the same thing as breathing oxygen? It's two different things. I can know oxygen, O, is it o, o, O2. You understand? To know it does not, you know, does not mean I am breathing oxygen. I can assure you there are angels that know that oxygen on earth is O2, but they don't breathe it. So the knowledge of Christ is not equivalent to living by faith. When it becomes a living or a breath, it means that's what is the sustenance of the soul. Is it the way we breathe with our lungs? Oxygen goes in, carbon dioxide comes out because of the exchange that happens inside our lungs, the alveoli, you know, the blood vessels. You understand? In the same vein, we are meant to be the soul, our soul, nefesh. In the Old Testament, such in the New Testament, should be breathing neshama, meaning God should be sending life. And how he sends life is not like Pastor Yola thought this morning. It's not when he sends precepts. It's when he sends lines. Because that's what makes the soul live. When God breathed into Adam's nostril, his physical body came alive. And of course, he had a toll on his soul. He didn't say an Adam became a, a, a incorruptible seed soul. No. 
He became a living soul. I Meaning he didn't need to learn it. That work was fully done in him. It came as something he can live by. He could name animals by it. He could do many things by it. So also, the breath of the Almighty is not limited to the knowledge alone. Much more, it speaks of us living. So if the Lord is calling for the breath of the Almighty through that, the season of the Spirit, it means the Lord wants us to enter livings. Meaning, realms of doings. Wherein our soul will begin to breathe. So those, check those, that, that he was making reference to the book of Job. Check them. There were people whose souls were at different levels of breath of the Almighty. Check even the ones we call miserable comforter. The things they said are what? Scripture. A person who lives by breath. Meaning when it has become a lifestyle, it's easier for you to judge scriptures. Because why, by the time you are living by breath, you, you are not beginning with revelation. You can tell scripture for what it is. There are some things we know by revelation. By the time you start doing it, you discover your revelation is contradicted. Because you now prove it. He said, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Because your mind being renewed is knowledge. Your mind being renewed is revelation, is precept. He said, so that you may prove what is the good will? Proving comes with doing. You know, you can be, somebody can hear this message and be bragging with it, bragging with it. When you enter it, you can be like, you understand? With the life of Christ, I can command wealth. I don't know what you people are preaching. With the life of the new creature, no problem. Enter. You know, you can be saying things that you've not proven. But he said, so that you may prove. You prove with use. Eh? David had not proved the armor. He had not proved the sword, the helmet. He actually went with what he has proven. Until we prove it, it has not become our life. So in the season of using, is the season we prove. That's the season, like you were saying, quoting daddy, you can tell that, oh, in this part, there is tribulation. They may be saying it, you may not have experienced it. But the day it comes, you begin to prove it. That you may prove, oh, oh, okay, this is it. What is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God? You prove it. How? Through your living. It is at that point they can say the soul is living. He can either live by faith, for daring is the just, you know, you know, Romans chapter 1, verse 17. Romans, I am rounding up, then I want us to pray some. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed, not the revelation. Everybody say righteousness. What are righteousness? Right standards. There is the gospel of Christ. Inside you find the precepts. Inside you find the knowledge. But inside, when that thing has been taught, the Holy Ghost begins to bring lines. What are lines? Righteousness of God revealed from faith. To faith, as it is written, the just shall live. Meaning the soul of the person who is being justified lives by faith. And how is he living? Righteous standards. I shouldn't talk to my wife like this. I shouldn't talk to my, my, my brother like this. I shouldn't. Those righteous standards being done. It is when I am doing it, you can say, the soul is living. In everlasting life, that's why you can say, the breath of the Almighty, you understand, is at work. Is at work in me. So if that is saying the breath of the, of course there are many things. I'm just saying one tiny thing. It means it's a season of doing it. We need to do a lot of things so as to come into much of the life of the Almighty, of the life of the Father, so that we may be His sons and His daughters. Can we be on our feet this afternoon? I want us to pray some. First of all, can we give thanks to God? Just 10, 15 minutes. Can we give thanks to God, everyone? Let's thank the Lord for his word. The grace of God on our parents that is made manifest. Let's bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Fale manua ti pajana pakata ni Malaysia. Profinando fushe shebeni akabana ti talabani ati. Grenato farkati ni ata papa ni nashi. Shimamandola mama. 
barakata ni abazuzi benia dinazi banina. In Jesus' name we pray. Can we pray for God's servant, our great daddy, Pastor Emeka Eguchuku, and our mommy, that the Lord would open doors of the bread of the Almighty. That the grace of God that is at work upon Daddy Oyegoke and Mommy Ellen, springing new thoughts of things everlasting, knocking on the doors of things eternal. Let's all dance as a church, showing our commitment, our desire, our, our quest to heaven, that God will grant his servant, his handmaiden, entrance in a great proportion. That we as their children, as the sheep, that they want, they ought to feed. That we are saying that God will grant entrance. Entrance into the bread of the Almighty. Entrance into all of the provisions of Jesus. Provisions of the promises. Provisions of the sacrifices. Provisions of the house. Provisions of the blood. The testament. Provisions of the crowns. The loving kindness crowns. The tender mercy crowns. Dolemenoelea Wilimeniandosia bumbunde le la la bumbunde le la 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 we ask as a church with the muweli anandofa matimango matimangesu matimango matimangorine ferigate feruga sua lamuka lamuka buaniate bauka uve uve uleu kauzaza meketetetete 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 that the Lord will tie his servant and his handmaiden to the aprons of Jesus in Reverend Kayode Oyegoke and Reverend Mrs. Ellen Oyegoke as per pastures, as per things of the Spirit. Paul said that in nothing he will not be ashamed. Paul said in Philippians 1 that the Lord will bring all consolation of scriptures all entrances, all mercies, all graces. Abayane, even Ojima, even Ojim Jalo, Okete Petaniate, Okete Peteniazo, Orite, Metibaraneta, Metiboreto Pete Takalikate, Metiboreto Takalikata, Takalikata, Erina Tete, Erina Tata, Mekratoska, 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 Mekratoska. Mekretoska, Petibalatata, Pachipata, 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 Pekita Tapatete, Pakita Tapatete, Pakita Tapatete, Orenete, Tete, 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 Gonasi, Gonapi, Gonata, Shelti Gatakalika Tesia. Can we pray for open doors of all trances? All trances, all trances into the realms of the promise, the realms of the covenant, the realms of sacrifice, the realms of the house, the realms of the things of the Almighty, the realms of glory, the realms of appearance. We pray for new all trances. Neri no re ni ra re ro ro de re re ri Neri no re ri ra Neri ro re ki ra ga na ra da re Neri go re ni re re ki ra ro re te 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 Ben deli poropo 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 Uda du we re na ta ta Da ru ve shu ala ta sa si si ala te Da you would open doors of utterance Unto your servants Doors of utterance For which he is in bounds Doors of utterance Meeting after meeting, Sunday service, a peace to life. Faramane, where elo, where eka, where ma, where ta, where sa, zambelo, zambechi, cheka takaleka takaleka tesia. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Last but one. In January, daddy came back from Poland. He had an experience. He saw an angel start strapped with food. Looking at our daddy, looking at ministers in our community, it's obvious this realm can't be prospered into without the ministry of angels. And the Lord sent one for food this year. Can we pray that the Lord will prosper the ministry of that angel towards his servant? That the Lord will unite his servant and his handmaiden with the ministry of that angel. That every, call it every sacrifice, every ritual to take everything per time this year that that angel is brought as is bringing that the Lord would help his servant is unmaiden to connect them can we go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus the food has been sent with Tapuranate on the EGFM we learnt that an angel can come and may not prosper in his ministry but that the Lord would show mercy to our daddy that the Eguchuku, our mommy, mommy Lillian, that this ministering spirit that is trapped with food will be delivering food. Every ritual of al uh, uh, alliance, every ritual and sacrifice of cohorting and, co and working together that the servant of God and the handmaiden of the Lord needs to make, that the Lord will show mercy, that the Lord will bring instruction, that the Lord will prosper the ministry of this angel. Yale more to sibamba balange shalugambuelola yangro meto kapate tekele kate kore natesia far ganama yate kapapa patanate tekele kate ole menoti ba Jesus is the Lord gamane gamaso gamate gamala yale katapra katekele katesia. Oh, Maneta Sibalaba. In Jesus' name we pray. Can we pray that God will bless us as a church with hunger? Beyond our desire to be hungry, that the Lord will make us hungry. That the Lord will pour a spirit of hunger upon us as a local assembly. But here in, in, in Abule Ado and everywhere, that there will be an hunger generated. Biologically, they say hunger comes from the head. The head sends information. Can we pray, Lord, initiate hunger in our midst? If you need to tamper with our natural for us to be hungry, Lord, tamper with it. Whatever you need to touch for the precious gift and nature and estate of being hungry and thirsty to be preserved and to prosper in our midst. Whatever you need to touch, Lord, come touch it. Touch it in us individually. Touch it in us as a church. Touch it in us as families. Touch us. Scatter every arrangement that negates hunger. Every arrangement that eats hunger, that eats thirst, that takes away passion for spiritual things. Take them away. Show us mercy. We want to be hungry. Sanga 
Yalo pereko vazeka de kapoche paparogo zenga ikanietos. Aga bachofe bagadege zenge dege zenge dege zenge diaga nakatos. Esa taba baba da kavere gazebi aga jaga laga zenge dege diaga tos. Oni de baro tos kaviana paste masi Jesus. Mercy for hunger for this particular season. For this particular season. Yesterday's hunger is not sufficient. It's not sufficient. It's not sufficient. Mercy, Jesus. Have mercy on my soul. Have mercy upon my heart. Oh, my Shiva Jimarata so kapandele kanasante papa papa papa. Oh, the Varuto Madaya la Vimia Ludo Beraka send la Gabasto Kapapa. Agi de Bochima Gaiga Zendia Gaiga Zendia Gaiga Zendia Tane Borotoskeve de Katata. Oh, mercy Jesus. Mercy Jesus. Mercy Jesus. Mercy Jesus. Usana Kasapre Tias Cavedos Telepataka Nia Sakapa. Oh, Kaparasta. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Can we ask the Lord finally, finally, all that has been painted, we know it's warfare against us for, not, for us not to prosper in this season. But those that will do a good, or execute a good warfare in seasons like this where the Lord is changing breath or whatever, there has to be a great activity of God's mercy over your house. I just had a sense in my spirit that there's great warfare over your head, so children of God. There's great warfare, great warfare, but mercy must prevail for you in this season. Can we ask the Lord for mercy? Mercy, oh God. Even if hunger comes, it's not because I know how to generate hunger. It's a mercy provision that is required for prosperity in life in this season. For the things everlasting are contacted by mercy. Mercy must not waste over this soul. Mercy must prosper. Must prosper in my heavens. Mercy for to position me aright for the breath of the Almighty. Oh, Majumalia Kambaluto Masimbanaka. We don't want to change identity negatively in the spirit. We don't want to be known as those that started in the spirit and are trying to perfect ourselves in the flesh. God forbid, have mercy, O oh God. Have mercy, O oh God. We are no greater than the Galatian church, but we need mercy. Mercy must prevail. The seven churches in the book of Revelation, we are no better than they are. We are asking for mercy. Jesus, your investment, your investment, your investment will not waste. Will not waste upon this house. Will not waste upon this company. Oh, have mercy, oh God. Have mercy, oh God. Have mercy, oh God. Have mercy upon Libala Pampi Alatom Ragadasie Kabapa. Ajimi Adumala Kisembri Popa Chuna Kavendo Lakata. Adi Lali Ali 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 Castaniaca to remove those false satisfactions, to remove those false satisfactions. Have mercy, oh God, where there's ease in my soul, let mercy come upon my soul to remove that ease that's making me complacent in Zion. Have mercy, Jesus. Asimili o fini maratandu ele papa Alumari malatu sumanda via tan la gavaya tendo lo sonka Abradige Oh shama papa 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 on Ravagadi Adabata Baba. It's not of him that wills. It's not of him that runs. Mercy, my 
must prevail. Mas he must speak for us here. Ask him a champ, papa, papa, papa. Ask him a champ, papa, papa. Ask him a piano, papa, papa. Ask him a champ, papa, papa. Ask him a da, papa, 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 papa. I'm not gonna be a tantal, a sante. To interact with brother the Almighty. Asuliva la 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 la. Ah, na para kasambro sakati ataste. Oh, fani ataste. Vali abi atapri alatasaste. Oh, sabaskai tata. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Shall we lift our hands and thank God for his mercy upon us even this afternoon? You have found mercy if the Lord comes to you to reprove you. It says all scripture is given by the inspiration of all piety. And it's profitable for rebuke. It's profitable for rebuke, reproof. It's profitable for correction. The Lord has adjusted our hearts this afternoon. He has brought a word of correction for our heart, to our hearts so that we can best profit even with the inspiration that's coming to us in this season. Can you thank God? Can you thank God for how he came mightily upon our pastor to speak his words? I believe we all heard Jesus this afternoon. We heard Jesus speaking expressly to us through his servant. Lord, we are grateful. We are grateful. It's not our right to hear your voice. It's not a right. It's a privilege. It's a privilege for us to be corrected even in seasons like this. We say, Father, thank you. Thank you for not sparing us. Thank you for speaking expressly to us. I thank you because we know your words are contain spirit and contain life. The reason why we should send this word will not waste over any soul. Thank you, our Father. We will profit with these words and your name will be glorified. Father, we give you praise. Thank you, our Lord and our God. To you be all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Shall we appreciate our pastor? Let's appreciate him. Thank you, sir, for that labor. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for not, not missing words, for the boldness to which you are to speak God's counsel to us. We pray these words will mix with blood in our hearts. It will not expire before we get home. It will stay in our hearts all year round, all year round. This will be our mantra. It will be our motto. It will be our driving inspiration so that we can best profit in this season. Let's say amen. Amen. All right. Uh, we've come to the end of service. Just a few announcements before we go. Let's recognize those who are worshiping with us for the first time. It's your first time here in the New Alden Way Church. Can you please indicate by waving your hands? Let's recognize you. Let's come to see you. Oh, thank you so much, my sister. Can you be on your feet? Let's see you. Let's recognize them properly. Please greet them as if you want them to come back. Let's be on your feet, please. Let's know you. Let's see you. Uh, we are so happy to have you in our midst. Thank you. Thank you for coming. We appreciate you so much. Thank you. Celebrate them. Celebrate them. Uh, we have a special number specifically for you. Be blessed as you listen in the name of Jesus. the entire pastorate and all of us at New York Living Way Church, we say welcome, welcome. We're so happy to make your acquaintance. Please, you see some of our brethren holding a placard written on first timers. Can you just take all your belongings and go with them for a few minutes? We want to get to know you better and uh, sort of collect your details, your contact information so we can keep in contact with you all week round. Hoping you will come again next week Sunday. Can you celebrate them as they go, please? <laughs> celebrate them like you want them to come back. If you are watching with us also on, for the first time online, we welcome you as well. We say thank you for being here, tuning in with us. Please do well to fill the uh, first timers form attached to your streaming platform so we can have your details and keep in contact with you. And God will bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. All right, uh, can we give our tithes? Is everybody paying tithe this morning? Can you be on your feet or this afternoon? Be on your feet to be prayed for. In Jesus' name. 
Our Father, we thank you. We are grateful unto you. Thank you for your faithfulness and your commitment to us. Thank you for you are a faithful Father, a tender-hearted Father. We give you all the adoration for life. Thank you, O oh God, for strength. Thank you, O oh God, for your covering. We are grateful. And thank you for how you have blessed us. Even this morning, O oh God, with, O oh God, your instructions, we say your name be magnified in our lives in Jesus' name. In obedience to your word, Father, we are bringing in our intents and we decree and declare that the devourer is rebuked in the name of Jesus. You will cause everyone to prosper. Our soul will prosper and our natural will prosper. Receive all the glory in our lives. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ma. If you are giving your tithe physically here, you can do that by putting the basket. If you are doing it online, we have our um, um, account details attached to the stream platforms. You can do it remotely. I'll add the Naira or dollar account. The Lord will strengthen us as we do so in the name of Jesus. Okay, midweek service continues this Tuesday. Uh, uh, episode live by 12 noon. Uh, streaming on all our streaming platforms. Um, that's our own midweek service. Uh, please, let's do well to be part of Episode Life by God's grace. Um, um, it's part of our, our obligations as a local assembly. And the Lord will strengthen us as we tune in in the name of Jesus. Okay. Um, House Fellowship will not hold today. I believe it's so that we can all tune in to uh, the grand finale of Easter retreat going on, EGFM Easter retreats. That's our, our parent ministry. So Easter, UK Easter retreats ongoing as we speak. So we are going to be encouraged to please be part of uh, um, the Easter retreat grand finale this evening. This starts around 6 o'clock our time. We are also encouraged to read after Ken Hagen books that have been made available at the bookstand. Please let's do well to, be, to take advantage of the proximity so that we can read up and strengthen our foundations. The Lord will strengthen us as we do so in the name of Jesus. All right. Is our video on cue? From video department, it's on cue. Please, after the next two announcements, we're going to be watching a video. Please, let's, let's be on cue. All right, we also have Bible games for sale at the sales and library unit at the stand at the back of the church. Please, let's remember, um, um, by God's grace, we have uh, a, um, some inspirational games that have been created for our children, also for us, so that we can uh, profit in our, as it were, leisure time. So please take advantage of, the, of these uh, games. We have Bible game. I think there's another one. I can't remember the name of as well. Um, let's, let's purchase them and play them. At least so you are, we don't you know that the games, those games, are, I believe they are the, the Lord trying to reach us. I remember I was about to go to bed and I saw an angel just came into the room and stood having a lot of things hanging on him. And those things that he was hanging on him were provisions. Let's from shoulder also, down to board, his you know, knees we are things hanging house, and then so he looked like this say, uh, uh, those things are actually the things that has been brought to us library, and so we are going to feed fat please let's do what to purchase them as well god is strengthening us in the name of jesus all right are we ready is the video on cue even in april are we ready it should be on cue right now. I, I, we have a video we want to show. Multimedia department, can anybody give me a signal? I, I, is that somebody's hand? Are you ready, sir? All right, please. We are waiting. Thank you. I remember I was about to go to bed and I saw an angel just came into the room and stood having a lot of things hanging on him. And those things that... I remember I was about to go to bed and I saw an angel just came into the room and stood having a lot of things hanging on him and those things that he was hanging on him were provisions from shoulder down to his knees we are things hanging and then so he looked like this those things are actually the things that has been brought to us and so we are going to feed fat Even in April, 
April. For there will be a major shift in April. There will be a major shift in your April. In line with the calendar of heaven. Even the calendar that's in the heart of the Father. April location. April positioning. April arena. April covenant. You shouldn't miss April. You should key April. April key. Key April, joy April, key April, meet you in April, waiting for you in April, to see you in April. Jesus. to 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 cleave to to sent for all to partake. I've on to send him for all to partake. For I've sent even my angel with these provisions for all to partake. I've sent even my angel, even my ministering spirit, sent with provisions for all to partake. For there is with him allocations for everyone, not some, not few, but for everyone. But you need to prepare for to receive. You need to prepare even your vessel for to receive. You need to prepare even your vessel for to receive. For there is a disposition of heart. There is a kind of heart. There is a kind of heart that would cause that which I sent him with even to be dropped. There is a kind of a heart looking for. There is a kind of a heart searching for. There is a kind of a heart Hungry. There is a kind of a heart crying for. There is a kind of a heart panting after. There is a heart that will receive that which even has been brought, even as an allocation for both you as a local assembly and even you as an individual. Even for this season of the spirit, for this season of the spirit, for it is a baptism. It is a baptism, even into an allocation in the spirit. So prepare your vessel. Prepare your vessel. Prepare your vessel. Readjust even your shadows. Readjust even your time. Readjust even that which takes your time from not focusing. For focus. For, for focus. For, for focus. Focus. Focus for to receive. Be prepared for to receive. Be prepared for to receive. For I sent him because I am coming. S -s sent him because I am coming. S -s sent him because I am coming. Receive of him that you might receive of me. For I am coming. And I am the capstone of that which he has brought. For I am also bringing myself. And I am bringing my father. Say the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. I think that is Lord further affirming that this April is supposed to be a date with destiny. Um, let's do well not to miss it. I believe strong that one of the reasons why the Lord spoke to us, even this message, um, the message 
is to also prepare us for this entrance. May we all be found worthy by the grace of God to partake of the blessings in April in the name of Jesus. Okay, see, that's uh, one of such blessings. The season of the Spirit is upon us. Um, reading the announcement says, uh, season of the Spirit 2024 is upon us. There's a great anticipation in the Spirit that awaits us on the last three Sundays of April and the first two Sundays of May. That is April 14th, 21st, and 28th. And we also have the 5th and 12th of May. And the theme of this year's season of the Spirit is what? The breath of the Almighty. That's the theme of, the, of this year's season of Spirit. We are all encouraged to be part of it, spiritually part of it, in all manners. We are also expected and encouraged to sow towards it. The account is the Life of the Spirit Ministries Missions account. It's an access bank account. Please, it's access bank, not Zenith. The same name, but it's an access bank account. So please, let's do well to send our Season of Spirit uh, offerings to that account. Let's say amen. All right. School of Tyrannus, uh, April 24, uh, 2024 cohort is here, I believe. And applications for the April cohort, a YPC course, on School of Tyrannus begins tomorrow at 8 a.m. Begins tomorrow at 8 a.m. Um, um, visit tyrannus.nlwc.church tomorrow to register. We have only 200 seats available. Of course, registration is also going to be based on first come, first sold. Once these 200 are complete, I believe it will be closed. So, fastest fingers as it were. Start, uh, um, registration starts 8 a.m. on Monday. So if you want to be part of the School of Tyrannus this year, or this month, right, this cohort, April cohort, please go do well to visit tyrannus at nlwc.church and register 8 a.m. from 8 a.m. tomorrow. God will strengthen us as we do so in Jesus' name. All right, EGFM meetings continue this week. We have Tuesday prayer meeting holding at 6 p.m. Venue is NYC, Charlie Boy Bus Stop, and Tony Bagada Expressway. Attendance is open to all those who have a means of going home other than public transport. We also have Lekki Soul Center, which holds on Wednesday at 11 a.m. Venue is Lagos Tea House at Multiway Lekki. And um, we have School of Spirit of Shows on Thursday by 10 a.m. The venue is EGFM Auditorium, 559 Kodu Road, Kosovo Bus Stop, 10 a.m. That's School of the Spirit on Thursday, 10 a.m. Revelation Hour this Saturday holds NOIC Compound. Uh, Charlie Boy bus stop. Um, attendance is open to all those who have a means of going home other than down full. All right. All our meetings will be streamed on our different platforms. So please, let's make it the date. Make sure we are part of these meetings indeed and in truth. Uh, we, will not, we will not be those that select food. You know, when you select food, it's because you're not hungry. We won't select food in Jesus' name. Tell your neighbor you won't select food. Tell your neighbor, I will not select food. All of those. You don't know the one where God is going to speak your matter. So just listen to everything. Attend all. Because God will not tell you. He won't tell you. You just have to make it a habit of listening so that you will not miss the Lord. The same way Elijah made the habit of following Elijah. That's why I was able to see him ascend. All right. Weddings in the month of April. Oh, no, wow. To God be the glory, we have one, two, three, four, eh? It's a lie. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Am I sure? Somebody talk to me. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Shall we take up our offering? I forgot offering. This number of weddings is distracting me. I forgot offering. Ha! Plenty of rice. You know, I'm looking forward to a, oh, let me not say that. I'm looking forward to a wedding where they will give me, you know, you no know, rice is the staple food for weddings. Are we taking up our offering? Let's let's be holy. Let's take up our offering. Praise the Lord. Have we pray over our offering? Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we are grateful to you. Thank you for your mercy upon us as an assembly. Truly, you love us. Thank you, our Father. Please receive this token, O oh God, in honor of what you have done for us here today. It's a token to say, Lord, we appreciate you visiting us today. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Okay, why is the offering goes on? Wedding, wedding, wedding. Hmm. 
Weddings in the morning. Are we, are we coming out? Are they coming out? I don't think we've seen some of these people. We have not seen these people. Though. They should come out. We have not seen them. Mommy, should they come out? Yeah, mommy said they should come out. So come out too. All right. Come, brother. Marvelous. And sister Tinoa, they come forward. Come, brother Toluwashi. And sister Adeniyi. Oluwa Timilene, come forward. You as well. Brother Elegbede, Damilaria, Sister Ogunyi Kaolaide, if you are here. Brother Ogundele, Damola, and Sister Ismail Oluatobi. Are you hearing names? Sir? Yes, uh, will you stand by another? Excuse me. Hey, my God, Mike. Stand by your intended. Don't go stand by somebody else. Don't confuse the brethren. This is not the time to be shy, you. You have, been, we, you have been talking marriage since. It's not today you'll be shy. Uh -huh. I don't know whether Brother Ekpeme Joseph and still Babila Ajobra are in church. I'm not sure. They're in church. Um, brother Nasiru Olamile Khan and Sister Adebaya Mudukwe. And also Brother Chidebere Odimo and Sister Blessing Okafo. Please, can we all come forward to be seen? I counted eight people. Who. I think seven should be here. Are we all complete? Please, please put apostolic distance between you and uh, your intended. Gap, gap. Let's know where you stand. Uh -huh. Small, small, small. It's too small. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Where is he? He's not in church. He's not in church. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. We are all welcome in Jesus' name. All right. So we are presenting all of our brethren that are getting back. Okay. So I'm going to call out their wedding dates. It's not in order. Is it in order? Okay, it's in order. All right, cool. So, all right, so we have, okay, the first one, the closest one is Brother Chide, Chidebere Odimo and Sister Bless Okafor. That's on the 5th of April. Can you wave your hand so we know that's there? Please wave your hand so they can see you. 5th of April. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. All right. We have 12th of April. We have two weddings on the 12th of April. Bra Marvelous. And Sister Tinwade on the 12th of April. Can you wave your hand so we can see you? We also have Brother Damilare and Stoguinka on the 12th of April. Are they here? 12th of April. Don't worry, we shall divide ourselves into twice and we shall attend. Rice must be eaten in all these locations. Let's say amen. Brother Ogundele, Damola, and Sister Ismail Owatobi, are they here? All right, sir. That is the 19th of April. Brother Legbede and Sister Lai, so that's 13. Brother Legbede and Sister Olaide are on the 13th of April. Then there's Brother Olu Shogma, Olu Afemi, and Sister Oba Demi Otolu Lokbe. Is that Olu Oba? Uh, did I not call you? Maybe I didn't call you. Sorry if I missed it. Where is Sister Tolu Oba and Tolu Oba and Brother Olu Afemi? Uh -huh. Sorry, I'm sorry. That's holding on the 26th. Is, is he not in church? He's not in church. All right. On the 26th of April, and Brother Ikpeme Joseph and Sister Ogugba Mila Debra on the 27th of April. I don't think they are here. They shall still come to be presented. And Brother Nosiru Ola Mileko and Sister Adebayo Modukwe, are they here? All right. He's not here then? No. All right. That's on the 28th of April. Let's say amen. So all these weddings, you see, April is April, April, April. For some people, they are April. Is, part of it is this. Not all of it, oh, part of it. So you are, all, these, all these are brothers are getting married in April. So look at their faces. Take their pictures. They have all been received. Don't receive any one of these people. Otherwise, you are in the flesh. Let's say amen. And it's our manner. Please rally around them. If there are weddings, please be part of them. Ask them how things are going. Support them in prayers, in cash, in kind. And the Lord will strengthen us as we do so in the name of Jesus. The mommy is going to pray for them. Let's pray. If you wish to stand here, please, can you stretch out your hands? And those of us that we are here already, can we stretch out our hands? Let's pray.
In Jesus' name. Our Father, we thank you. We are grateful unto you. We do not take this for granted. Oh, Father, it is not by our doing. It is not by our righteousness. But, Father, we found mercy even in your sight. Thank you, O oh God, for bringing these two together, for bringing them together. According to your will, it is your desire that they too should come and make a family. Lord, you desire godly seeds, and that is why you are coupling them together. Receive all the glory. Thank you for opening their eyes to see each other. Receive all the glory, our Father. We say thank you. We thank you for your blessing us, O oh God, as a local assembly. Lord, we bring thanksgiving. We bring thanksgiving. We bring thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you for what you are doing in the life of these young ones. Thank you. Thank you for showing them the paths of life. Thank you for your leading. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that is constantly, oh God, leading them. Receive all the glory, our Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, committing these ones into your hands. All that it takes, all it will take, oh God, for this to be a success, you will provide. In the name of Jesus, you will provide for each and every one of them. None will lack. In the name of Jesus, even in this time of preparation, you will keep them. Lord, you will keep them. No evil shall come near their dwelling. In the name of Jesus, in all that they are going to do, Lord, you will give your angels charge over them. In the name of Jesus, I ask that, Lord, you will keep each and every one of them. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. And amen. 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 Thank you so much. Can we celebrate them as they go back to their seats? All right. Very wedding anniversary and birthday celebrants. Can you come forward to be prayed for? I we had some mighty birthdays in the course of the week. So please, can you all come forward to be prayed for? <laughs> birthday. Birthdays, yes. Okay, so we are all bed. Wedding anniversary, awesome. Okay, congratulations. Birthday, oh great. Okay, and our pastors are here also. So we're thanking God for all of them, and we're going to pray for them. Can we pray and release your faith to bless these ones? They are all lovely people who have enjoyed the favor of God in the last one year. Can you thank God for them? The favors that they've experienced, the victories they've experienced, the deliverances that they've experienced. Can we thank God on their behalf? Thank God for some of them got married in the last one year. Some of them got unique favors. And above all, thank God for understanding that came to these ones in the last one year. Thank God for shifts in hope. God gave some 
hope here, a greater hope, a greater energy to hope for that which is invisible. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For our pastors, we thank you for how you have helped them to labor and carry the burdens of your people in different ways. Lord, we are grateful. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we are grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Even for those who look like they are just coming for the first time or they are trying to find their place in this community, Lord, we thank you. On their behalf, we say thank you. Thank you, great God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We thank you. Like you celebrated, Nathaniel, we celebrate everyone who is new, everyone who is young, everyone who is old. We thank you. We celebrate all of them in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Our Father, we thank you for these ones you have loved greatly. We thank you for the blessings of peace, of life, of joy and gladness. Thank you for the couple that is celebrating another year of marriage. Thank you for all our pastors, our brethren, our children, every one of them you have brought to, through another one year of your favor, of your victories, of your deliverance. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Lord, above all, we thank you because you have loved this one so much and you have positioned their heart to hear that which is truly food, food for the soul. You said your, your, your flesh is meat indeed. Thank you for the privilege that you have built this one. You've got them around the place where they can truly be fed with the true meat that is from on high. We are grateful. Thank you for the pastors that you have raised over these ones. Thank you for the, uh, the leadership and the provision of bread through your servants, the pastor over this house. Thank you for the grace that is flowing through him to all your children that are all celebrating. I ask that there will be an increase of life in the name of Jesus, there will be that vital connection in their spirit to receive all the blessings of God that is available for them in this house. In the name of Jesus, I pray that the Lord God will increase you more and more, make you a thousand times more in the name of Jesus. That your heart will truly be able to take up the riches of heaven and run with it. In the name of Jesus, that you truly come to a place of great increase, of great productivity through this life that you are having access to in this house. In the name of Jesus, we speak peace to all your families. We speak hope, hope from on high. The hope for that which is incorruptible will be heightened up in your hearts. In the name of Jesus, as we enter into this month of April, as we celebrate the grace of God in this month, that truly you will partake of these great blessings. In the name of Jesus, we ask that the peace of God will increase on you greatly. In the name of Jesus, for those pregnant, I ask that the peace of God, the mercy of God, the strength of God will keep you and strengthen you through even the next year. We bless the year that is ahead of you with a great grace from on high. We call you blessed because you have met with your God. In the name of Jesus, thank you, great God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Can we say happy birthday again? Congratulations. Happy anniversary. God bless you. Do we have cakes? Okay, we have. So we're all going to connect with this and just celebrate. So the younger ones, come here, come here. You call the cake on their behalf. Are you shy? Yes, on their behalf, on behalf of all the fat, the daddies and mommies. So what would they call the cake to? Bread, right? So, one, two, three, bread. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. All right, before we go, um, this week has also been a blessed week of multiple birthings. We have had like five babies because of this week. Let us not become too familiar. Oh. Don't say you don't have yeah. I don't want to be known as a church. You better be family, you better be grateful. Ah, okay, oh. It's not the devil that gave us those babies, it's God. Let's say amen. So we have babies in the house of our brother St. Michael Ajinde. Um, Brown Limited Tall. He's another a father too. Uh, who else? Bishop Arogu Daddy as the attorney. That is three. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Uh, okay, there's a sister, one of our dear sisters, Sister Lillian, who gave birth in Abuja, one of the Abuja brethren also. And uh, finally, someone in. Yes, okay, Dre, Dr. Dre himself. Brother Dre as the in the US. Five babies in the last one week. And that's how it will continue to be. In the name of Jesus. So let's call them, let's celebrate to them. I reach out to them and, uh, and uh, just uh, you'll, uh, celebrate with them. All right, I think we are done. Any other announcement? You, you don't burn? Okay. I thought you were saying me to me too. It was so happy, don't worry. All right. Shall we rise when we share grace together in fellowship? I think that's all. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, Surely, God's goodness and God's mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And this week, this week, as you enter April, you will breathe a new breath. You will have a visitation of the breath of the Almighty. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Have a blessed week. Intending couples should go upstairs right now for their classes. Intending couples. Thank you.